Providence. A shot, they score! Wow. Right off the bat, Corbin Klein, the All-Stater, takes advantage of the equipment malfunction of Travis Breyer, and it's our early one to nothing San Ignatius lead. Drops it deep, Tiernan Ryan below the goal, circles, point Blake chance, shot, they score! Michael Holub in the slot with a ton of space, and he gives somebody as talented as Holub that much space, Mike, he's gonna bury it more times than not. Heiner with the shot, he scores! Jack Reiner beats Pavitt's glove side, and with 6.20 left in the first period, it's three to nothing, Ignatius. Big check comes, point blank, they score! Noah Oliver just finds the puck in the slot and he beats Laughlin and Providence finally responds, they trail by two. Play was Breyer to prevent a goal for Ignatius. Stuff a tamp, they score! Corbin Klein wraps around and beats Pavic, it's four to one. Tiernan Ryan, stick tied up, pulls to his forehand, couldn't get a shot off, wrap attempt, he scores! Tiernan Ryan collects below the net. Wrap attempt beats Pavitz, it's five to one. Two on one here for Ignatius. Reef and Seinloft, Klein shoots. And another goal as Jackson Steinloft beats Pavitz, it's six to one. Vega crosses over, follow up chance, and Victor Ventura puts it between the legs of Pavitz. And we're already at a running clock here, it's seven to one the top four teams in the state. Here's a shot from the point, and they're able to beat Laughlin. Now back to seven to two, and Celtics can at least come together and celebrate that, now trailing by five. This game one goes to the Wolfpack, eight to two. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Arctic Ice Arena here in Orland Park, Illinois, for game two of the Kennedy Cup Final, where the Providence Celtics try to stay alive against the number one team in all of the CCHL, the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. Rudy Hodgson alongside Andrew Rubin. Dylan Ward will join us in just a second here. It's game two. You got to love it. Pressure cooker game. One team can win it all. One team can extend it to three. You got to love it. You mentioned it, Rudy. Backs against the walls here for the Celtics. Kennedy Cup, one of the most storied trophies here in all of Illinois high school hockey. Playoff hockey, one of my favorite sports to watch in all of the world. You can feel the energy inside of this building right now as the fans start to filter in. You can only expect it's going to be a sellout type atmosphere. Rudy, and there's so much to look forward to, we can't even begin to talk about it. One of the most storied tournaments in all of Illinois hockey. Let's turn things over to one of the most storied head coaches in said league, Providence head coach Nick Ichancio with our very own Dylan Ward. Take it away, Dylan. Thanks, guys. Coach. St. Ignatius takes game one on their home ice. Series shifts back here to Arctic Ice Arena, your home ice. How are you looking to respond? I, we've got to manage the details much better than we did in game one. You know, we obviously want to get off to a better start. It'd be great if we could get a lead and, and kind of get our confidence up and try to build a little momentum off that. But I, I think we got to we got to kind of let loose a little bit, and try to have some fun out there. I think we got a little tight after we lost the lead early on, uh, on last week. Well, in CCHL play, this is now the fifth meeting between you guys and St. Ignatius. You beat them one of those games 4 nothing. What worked well in that game that you're hoping to see tonight? Um, I think we, we, we played with a, a lot more grit. I think we, we kind of, that's, that's how they play. And I think in some other games, we've kind of backed down. We've kind of matched their aggressiveness in that game. And it's something we're going to have to do today. We've, we've got to be able to win battles. All right, thanks, Coach. Guys, back up to you. Thank you, Dylan. And you know, we can talk about all the nitty gritty, but it's really gonna come down to the superstars. And, and when you look at this Providence team, if they wanna stay alive, it's gonna come down to their star goalie, Andrew Pavich, who was sporting a 941 save percentage this season. You got a chance to look at him a little bit. What are your thoughts on him? I could not be more impressed watching Andrew Pavich. I've had the ability to call one of his games earlier this year as well. You mentioned the 941 save percentage, a 1.30 goals against average. Those numbers are just off the charts good. He's the only goaltender really playing for this Providence Celtics, playing over 50 games already this year. He's the true backbone to this team. And then you look on the other end, St. Ignatius. They have had offensive production from so many players, but one stands out above the rest. Number two, Victor Ventura, 26 points in the regular season in CCHL play. If Providence wants a chance to stay alive, they're going to have to neutralize him on the offensive end. 
Yeah, Victor Ventura has been fantastic throughout this entire year, but St. Ignatius also benefits from having so many weapons they can go to offensively. Corbin Klein, who they unfortunately lost to injury a little bit during the year, they feel like he's one of the best players in the entire state of Illinois. And Tiernan Ryan is actually the leading point getter for them in the playoffs so far with 13 points in only five games. Only a sophomore as well. They feel like throughout the year he's taken multiple steps into becoming a superstar type player. And guys, cool. you talk about St. Ignatius in the playoffs, not just here in the CCHL. State playoffs underway. They're two games in 19 to 3 goal differential through two games including a 10 to 3 win just last night so it's going to be interesting to see if there's any tired legs out there of course providence playing on friday night too well gentlemen i have to ask they did have a game last night granted a 10-3 victory over nutrier white um, a, a game that really didn't seem like it, it seemed more like a warm-up for tonight you know this is the one that really matters some people would argue that these teams care more about the kennedy cup What's it going to take for them to get those legs going? You know, it's a quick turnaround here, and this is a very, very important game for both teams. Yeah, and it's playoff hockey, like I mentioned earlier. Back-to-backs are never easy, especially now in the playoffs. You're going to get every team's best game. But, Rudy, you mentioned these teams care so much about the Kennedy Cup. State playoffs also so important to them as well. Just every single night, it's an exciting atmosphere at the rink here right now in high school hockey for Illinois. Well, they're looking to force a game three. Those Providence Celtics wearing those beautiful black uniforms with white striping and green trim. It's going to be one of those nights here. We look over. We talked about Andrew Pavich. One of the things about him that stands out, he was the John Duran MVP this season in the league. If they want any chance to see a game three, they're going to have to rely on number 33. Yeah, I mentioned earlier he's the backbone. We talked to Coach Ichancio before the game. He knows that their goaltending and defense are a definite strong suit of this team when it comes to playoff hockey. Defense and goaltending are the most important things. Will they be able to slow down this offensive attack that St. Ignatius has? The whistle has blown. The game is about to start. The St. Ignatius Wolfpack, the Providence Catholic Celtics, we're underway here at game two of the Kennedy Cup Finals. And just as quickly as we started, We'll slow things down in icing just a mere six seconds in. 17-minute periods here in the Kennedy Cup final. A little uh, an, or, an, orth, an unorthodox number for some of these games. Some of them uh, typically 20, some of them 15. This one's 17 is just right. That's how we do it here in the Kennedy Cup. Ignatius wants to draw first shot. Pavage slows things down. Feels the first one go straight to his chest. Solves his first test. That's exactly what Andrew Pavich wants. He wants a clear-sighted long shot for his first shot, help him get into the feeling of this game. Providence wins the draw. They try to get it out, trying to chip it out. They eventually do a one-on-one -on -one the other way if they can hurry. That's Burris. Burris making his way over. Trying to find somebody in front. Can't pass to the point. Shot gets blocked. And heading the other way are the Wolfpack with the puck now. Is Corbin Klein, one of the weapons of this Wolfpack team. That one gets taken away, a little bit of a skirmish behind the net. And quickly, it's Providence trying to get out of the zone. They eventually do. With the puck now is Felice. Felice dumps it deep. Will they call an icing? They won't. Play continues. Ref say, let's go. Both teams doing a pretty good job breaking out the puck right now. Lots of open ice and lots of speed to start this game. This is a turnover in front, trying to get the centering pass. Eventually does. Can't spin around and get the shot there is Victor Ventura. We spoke about him. And the other way, here come the Celtics. Celtics get it down the length of the ice, squeezing that. Will be Ethan Laughlin who checks in. Won't be a shot on goal, but I'm sure it's nice for him to feel some rubber here early on in the game. Yeah, and we didn't get a chance to talk about Ethan Laughlin in the pregame, but he's sporting a 9-1-7 save percentage and a 1.54 goals against average. Again, just incredible numbers for a goaltender. Puck here in the St. Ignatius zone. Winning that draw is Providence, but beating Everyone to the puck is Ventura once again as the puck is won there in the neutral zone by the Celtics playing the puck behind the net is Laughlin trying to play it back nearly gets it taken away and the forecheck playing a bit of a factor here early on for the Celtics and that's what you want to see right as a, a turnover in front a shot they score Finn Harris opens it up for the Celtics it's one nothing here in game two Rudy you beat him to the point you mentioned the forecheck is what really set up this goal for the Providence Celtics and they force that turnover and Finn Harris just turns right to the middle and he beats Ethan Laughlin to the low blocker side to give Providence an early 1-0 lead. Finn Harris 
his third of the postseason. And just as quickly as they were able to set the four check, they set the table. It's one to nothing early. It's the exact start that the Providence Celtics want in this game. As the Celtics not letting up, trying to get it deep into the Ignatius zone, but still playing in the neutral zone. Eventually Ignatius comes away with it. That was Reiner. But the puck comes back to the defensive zone, chipping it off the glass there. is an Ignatius defenseman, and that'll be an icing as the stretch pass doesn't find anyone and will go back to the Ignatius zone. You already see the effect that that forecheck has had for Providence, saying Ignatius icing the puck there when they really probably had some time to make, you know, high-skilled play there, really get their breakout going, but they feel in the pressure that Providence is putting on them early. It's the Celtics that win the draw, trying to get a shot off there. Or the Celtics, but they eventually can. And another rush here. Coming the other way is Ignatius. Backhanded shot. They score! Tiernan Ryan evens the odds. It's one to one. We see the speed of Tiernan Ryan as he was just flying down these right hand boards for the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. And he comes in all alone with Andrew Pavich. And you'll see him just freeze Andrew Pavich before pulling that puck to the backhand, beating him to the far side. And just like that, Rudy, we're already tied 1-1 just two minutes into this game. It's shaping up to be another classic Kennedy Cup final. Five minutes in, less than five minutes in, we're all square at one. Dylan, you're down there. It looks like it's really fast already. Yeah, guys, down here at ice level, just watching these guys skate, you can tell that there's so much energy here, so much passion, and both these teams trying to win their uh, the Kennedy Cup. And... Funny enough, actually, if you guys know the President's Trophy curse in the NHL where most often the team that finishes first place in the league doesn't go on to win the Stanley Cup. Kind of a similar story over the last eight seasons in the CCHL. It's only been twice in the last eight seasons that the number one seed took the Kennedy Cup, and that was by the Celtics both times. The Celtics, one of the most storied teams in all of the CCHL. Historically very, very strong. They got the opener here. They're trying to avoid elimination as it's Ignatius with the puck deep. And with the puck now is Kuzmala trying to get a little bit of separation. Passes it off to the point. The shot there from Reef actually passes it back deep. As two Celtics applying pressure there. Not trying to get anything going. A block shot in front. Another look there. He whips on the pass. Another shot. And another save by Andrew Pavich. That time it's Kuzmala. Yeah, and Rudy, we see you in that situation. St. Ignatius actually had four players under the top of the circles in the offensive zone trying to generate offense. Their defense get very active. We mentioned they are so good offensively. It's really a total blitz style from the St. Ignatius team. Do whatever it takes to score goals. It's Ryan and Harris, the two goal scorers at the draw. Ignatius does win, and then they get it deep into their offensive zone. Providence can't clear it. Eventually they will with a turnover there in the slot, and it's the Celtics trying to apply some pressure, get that momentum back. Another turnover in the neutral zone, and it's Dickups, Duckups that comes away with it, dishes it off to Ramos. Ramos, one of the best players on this team, tries to get it through on the backhand, recovers just fine. Centering pass doesn't get through. It's Duckups once again with the shot. That one gets blocked there by Gracie, and Gracie trying to find a stretch pass, finds Reiner. Couldn't really corral it, but a lot of physicality there. And it's Reiner with a little bit of room. He shoots it, and a save there by Pavich. Blocks it away into the corner. Good rebound control. Nothing there, and that forces Providence to think about it a little bit more and ice the puck. Guys, just want to throw this in there. Before you sent it down to me when I was standing by with head coach of the Celtics, Nick, Nick Ichancio. Rudy, you mentioned the beautiful black jerseys. They actually debuted these jerseys last season as a special one-off and in tryouts the following spring, they had a bunch of guys saying how they couldn't wait to don the, the beautiful black jerseys, and so they decided to keep them as a permanent alternate. Just a fun little tidbit. A good idea there. Those are beautiful as Providence gets it deep into their offensive zone and trying to get something cooking here. As it's Ignatius that comes away with the puck, but the Celtics recover just fine. A shot from the point. That one whisked away there by Laughlin, the blocker. Gets it into the right corner. A long stretch pass doesn't get all the way through. Corralling it there was Nick Mastro who checks into the game. 
And a deflection and the puck goes out of play. It's Moraskas. Last tip was from the Wolfpack. Rudy, something I'm picking up here, when Providence can get the puck under the St. Ignatius net, really get that four check going, that's when they get some sustained offensive zone time. But besides that, it's really been all St. Ignatius here early on. Providence got that early goal just now again. We saw him in the offensive zone. But other than that, most of the action has been in front of Andrew Pavich. Well, we saw just how important the first goal was in game one. 30 seconds in, Ignatius set the table. But that really kind of set the tone for the rest of the night as they would go on to win 8-2 to two and take game one of this Kennedy Cup championship series. Another icing will come back to the Providence end. A little bit of an issue right now for Providence coming out of their zone. Looks like they're trying to hit the weak side winger coming across the middle, but the St. Ignatius defense, and especially their weak side defense, and doing a really good job of mirroring that guy and really denying that pass. That's why it's led to so many icings here early on. Shinlin wins the draw there for the Wolfpack. Getting the puck deep once again is the youngster Shinlin as they get it deep. Trying to apply some of that forecheck the same way the Celtics did with the puck now is Burris. Burris can't get it out. And a shot there. Denied by Pavich. Plays it off to the corner. And it's the Celtics that eventually get it out. Yeah, it looked like that shot surprised Pavich a little bit. That spin shot could be very deadly, especially if a goalie doesn't pick it up. It's happened before. We've seen crazier things. Long stretch pass to Ventura. Ventura tries to play it off. Eventually finds Chinlin. Chinlin has an option in front. And that'll be our first delayed penalty. The first power play will go in favor of the Wolfpack. Looks like a hook. I believe it was Vinny Felice that's going to get called for the hook. And it's going to give us our first look at the St. Ignatius power play. Again, we mentioned how many weapons they have. You can only think about how good their power play must be with all the offensive firepower they possess. 11.51 left here in the first two-minute power play for the Wolfpack, and it's the usual suspects on that first power play unit. Once again, it's Ventura creating a little bit of space. Decides not to shoot it, dishes it off to Steinloff. Centering pass doesn't exactly get there. As the Celtics trying to get it out, doesn't look like they will. Eventually get a little bit of space there, but saving it is Ventura. Chip pass in deep. Centering pass doesn't get through. Deflected away by the defender but still can't get out of the zone. Shot finds its way through, but not on goal. As once again, it's Ignatius trying to apply a little bit of pressure. Centering pass denied by Pavich with the left pad. And still in the zone are the Wolfpack. Stretch pass, saved by Pavich. Rebound, scores! Jack Perrault makes it 2-1, to one, and St. Ignatius has the lead. What a very tricky play here from the Wolfpack. This puck gets wrapped around from the point under the net to Corbin Klein, who looks like he's going under. And you see in the replay, Andrew Pavich looks to look over his right shoulder because he thinks that puck's going to the other side. But Corbin Klein passes it back to the short side to Jack Peral, whose first shot doesn't get there, but has a rebound sitting right in front of him. And he just buries that home to give St. Ignatius a two to one lead. Guys, Dylan, yeah, eight, go ahead. Sorry, eight to two in the first game, guys. That's 10 goals. That's pretty high. Looks like. We're going to have another pretty high-scoring game here. Less than halfway through the first, already three on the board. Well, Dylan, I was just about to ask you, from that level, I mean, that pass has got to look good as we get a potential two-on-one there. It's quickly well defended there by Providence, and that eventually gets out. You saw the play down there at ice level. How about that pass? Yeah, that was phenomenal. Eyes in the back of his head, just getting that to the center. And, you know, you talked about Corbin Klein, uh, Andrew, and his talent level pre-game in the private conversation we had. What a sensational save there by Pavich as it looked like a wide open net for Ignatius. Another chance here, backhanded, another save by Pavich. And after letting up two in a row, that's exactly what you want to see if you're the Providence Celtics. Your goalie's keeping you in it. Yeah, some great save sequence there from Andrew Pavich, really from all sorts of angles, rebounds, constant pushing back and forth needed from him, but he stands tall to keep this game two to one. Very composed is Andrew Pavich. No stranger to the pressure. But they'll need him here if they want any chance to see another day. And so far, don't let the, don't let the score fool you. He's, he's had a good start to this game as it's Ignatius once again with the puck. Charlie Reef 
Gets hit behind the net there. They still can't get out of the zone. Steinloff applying a little bit of pressure, small frame. But a very, very speedy skater as it's Providence the other way, trying to get a shot off. It is Ramos. Doesn't find the cage. Another shot there. Goes off the netting. It's Ethan Laughlin with a stick. Slow things down. Again, we see once Providence got that puck under the goal line of San Ignatius, they're able to force turnovers. They get a quick point shot out of it. Unfortunately for the Celtics, they didn't have anybody in front for any sort of screen or redirection, but you think that has to be the game plan going forward for Providence. And for San Ignatius, I'm sure head coach Spence Montgomery would like to see him a little bit better in their defensive zone, getting easy outs, but overall has to be pleased with the way his team has been playing. Absolutely. As that's coach of the year, Spencer Montgomery. You know, he is his first season as a head coach, and he's already leading them to a Kennedy Cup final. Granted, the talent at St. Ignatius is very, very promising. As play continues here, pass finds its way through, trying to tee one up. There is DJ Fensel, but just lost it. As it's the Wolfpack once again, trying to get something going on the breakout. Potential odd man rush here, a four on three if they can hurry. With the puck now, trying to center it. They can't. Another look here. But he could potential two on one there if they hurry. And they couldn't as Ignatius gets back just in time to apply a little pressure on the odd man rush. St. Ignatius the other way. It's Owen Ray getting it deep. They want to change. Providence has a little bit of time and space to think about the next play. Applying that forecheck, though, is Chinlin. They have to settle things down and slow it down. As it's Zadakis. Clearing it will not be an icing. Beating everyone to the puck, though, is Nico Felice. Nico Felice has an option in front. Gets it. They score! Felice to Felice. That brother connection, baby. It's 2-2. Two to two. We saw that icing get waved, and you mentioned Nico Felice wins the race under the goal line and wins this puck all by himself. And with the eyes in the back of his head, he throws this right to the back door to his brother Vinny Felice, who you see is just waiting right there. No chance for Ethan Laughlin, and we're tied 2-2 two to two here with eight minutes to go in the first period. Early on, no goal passes. horn here at Arctic Ice Arena, but we do have a little kiddo over here with the Viking horn. I'm sure you can hear it from up there, not too far from where you guys are. And Providence with two goals on eight shots. Well, if you love high scoring games, we got the game for you here at Arctic Ice Arena. It's two to two. Eight minutes and some change here left in the first period as it's Providence trying to get out of the zone, but they can't. It's Ignatius applying more of that forecheck that they're so well known for. But here comes Providence the other way. Solo mission from Bruno Hanzel. He can't get through, and Providence has to settle to slow things down. Long stretch pass there by Breyer. Trying to find Hansel and really can't. And getting it out is St. Ignatius. Look out. It looks like that puck almost hit. Very well-known St. Ignatius camera guy, Butch Connolly, but <laughs> it was just able to be just to his right or left of him, thank goodness. It looks like nobody is injured as well. But, Rudy, we mentioned how both these teams recently had state playoff games. St. Ignatius playing yesterday, last yeah. night, against Nutria White. Providence went to overtime late Friday night against Carmel. You wouldn't know it the way these teams are playing. It's so fast out here on the ice. It's like these teams have been fresh for a week. James Gracie leading the rush, gets it deep into the O zone. Another one of those behind the back passes from Jack Reiner, saving it at the point is Tiernan Ryan. Tiernan Ryan has a look, centering pass. They score again, Cameron Kazmala. Three to two in favor of the Wolfpack. This play is all set up by Tiernan Ryan. You mentioned he holds the blue line, attacks the net, draws the defender over to him. Again, he freezes Andrew Pavich first before he finds his man on the back door for a wide open tap in Cameron Kazmala to give San Ignatius a three to two lead. Goals galore so far here in game two of the Kennedy Cup Finals. Guys, I'm not sure what kind of view you had on the full Tiernan Ryan play run. It was up here by the glass. It was right in front of my face. He dangled around one defender beautifully right along the boards. Once again, it's Ryan. Nice move to the outside, trying to drive in. He can't center pass again. That one just wide of the cage. But it's Ryan making his stamp here in these Kennedy Cup Finals. 
finds it himself with the puck once again, takes a high hit before Vinny Felice tries to get it out, finds Burris, but they can't seem to clear things out of their own zone. Momentum shift after momentum shift. That's playoff hockey here as it's Corbin Klein at the corner. Can't get anything going. Potential high stick there. They won't call it there. It's Jack Reiner getting hit in the face. Nico Felice gets it deep. They want to change. And St. Ignatius, a little bit of space and time to slow things down. But that forecheck paying dividends here as they force an icing. And Providence has a chance to try to get momentum back in their favor. Yeah, shifts after a goal, Rudy, are just so crucial. And so far in this game, it feels like Providence has really dominated those shifts. You mentioned the momentum changes. Providence has done a very good job of coming back time and time again. But this, it's so important in games like this to be able to ride the wave. But you can't keep giving up these odd man opportunities. You can't keep giving up these offensive scoring chances these teams are getting and be able to sustain success in a game like this. Finn Harris tries to get a shot off. Doesn't make its way to Laughlin as St. Ignatius will clear. And it will not be called icing as it's Travis Breyer with the puck. Looks like the forecheck trying to do something for both teams here as it's DJ Fensel applying a pressure. Eventually getting it out of the Celtics. Trying to get a two on one going. Almost a hook there, but the refs are letting the kids play. You got to love that. Centering pass. That one could have been a slash as well. I agree, Rudy. Looked like it was Den DJ Fensel who got his stick slashed out of his hands in front of the net in that centering pass, but you mentioned it, no call. Yeah, guys, that's clear as day for me. I had a great view of it. Good pickup, Andrew. And usually that stick sliding across the ice is the evidence. Yeah, it's almost all the time, Dylan, once you see that stick go down the ice. When a defender comes down on that stick, you're almost going to see a penalty all the time just out of natural reaction. As we get things going once away here, it seems like the Celtics dodged a bullet, another hand pass, another stoppage here with 5.46 left in the opening stanza of this match. And that hand pass, I think, was actually by design by St. Ignatius, their last man back. If he put that puck down, there were two Providence Celtics on him. They could have stripped it right away, went down on a 2 on 0. He very intelligently throws it forward. He'll take the hand pass and the whistle over the 2 on 0. And you know, that's been a trend so far early on in this game is they, they haven't really been able to capitalize on odd man rushes that they can, you know, really, really take advantage of, especially as you're trying to sway some momentum. I don't know, Dylan, you're down there at ice level. What are you seeing here on missed chances by Providence? Got it. I say that. We apologize. Uh, seems like we might have a little bit of issue with Dylan down there at ice level. We'll get things squared away here as play continues, though. He's trying to get out of the zone there. Was Charlie Reef can't. But eventually it's Kosmala that does. But McLaughlin forced to play it back after Providence dumps it back in. I'm not really sure what was going on there by Corbin Klein, but Providence can't really seem to get anything going, but an offside is there. Just a little too eager is number 33, Jackson Steinloff. Hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, I think it's sounding better now, but just a quick update. St. Ignatius, while the score is close, they do have the lead, and they also have the lead in shots, 17 to eight at this point in the game. It's a lot of shots for the first period, my goodness. Spot on there, but with the way this game's been playing, the pace, these teams are really committed to playing offensive hockey, not so much of a stay-at-home safe type of mentality. It's not surprising to see the shots that high. Burris quickly taken off the puck. They're going to call a holding call, and the Providence Celtics will find themselves with the man advantage with 5.07 left. Yeah, if we can get a replay of this, because we we've been talking about how these officials have really been letting the kids play so far. We did see that one penalty called on Providence early on. But I don't know if that was so much of a hold on that play. I have to get a replay for a better look of it. But either way, it's going to be a power play for the Providence Celtics here. Guys, with the way this game's been going, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction that Providence ties the game here on this power play. I love it. I love it. Great prediction. I, I, I. We'll see what happens here as the Celtics 
Try to even the odds here, but quickly the Wolfpack get out of the zone. They'll kill a little bit of clock and they'll scare some of the crowd in the process as it's Nico Felice trying to create a little bit of space. Nice skating there from Felice. Uses the boards to dish it off to Breyer. Breyer saves it. Finds Felice once again. Felice finds a lane. Back door. And a beautiful save by the right pad of Ethan Laughlin. Gets it with a skate blade. I don't think Carson Burris got all of that shot fanned on it just a little bit. Once again, a shot. That one gets deflected. Still in front. Covered there by McLaughlin. Tense moments here for the Wolfpack. But the netminder finds it. Looks like we're going to replay here this Carson Burris one-timer. Again, just didn't get good wood on it. And then we see this replay. The puck just pinballing everywhere. But Ethan McLaughlin is able to get that, looks like with his glove hand for a whistle, what really was just mass chaos in front of him. It's Burris taking the draw, and he'll win it. Breyer finds Felice. Felice back to Breyer up at the point. Breyer fires it, deflected in front, goes to the right of McLaughlin. Of Laughlin, I apologize, McLaughlin. The Celtics once again with possession. Doesn't connect. Goes outside of the offensive zone. They'll have to regather. And the Celtics starting to feel a little bit of the pressure here. We're a minute into the man advantage. Four minutes left in the period. And the Celtics' best chance comes early in the power play. The breakout here. Trying to lead the rush there once again is Felice. They'll have to settle for a dump in and a little bit of a forecheck as they get a change. The second unit starting to come out. And it's the Wolfpack that clear again down the length of the ice. Zadakis will have to play it. Another effort on the forecheck for the Wolfpack. Stretch pass, dumping it once again are the Celtics. That time Finn Harris gets it deep. Harris once again with the puck. Tries to play it off the glass. Nobody, nobody there, no options. Dumping it down once again are the Wolfpack. That time Egan Ryan. Rudy, we saw Providence really move this puck around, get some good chances. You mentioned about the first 40 seconds, then it was just one miscommunication that led to the puck leaving the zone. And since then, the pressure of St. Ignatius has not allowed Providence really to get any possession at all on this power play. So both teams are now back to full strength. The power play is ended for the Celtics. Our predictions were wrong. That one finds its way over to the netminder. And Ethan Laughlin will squeeze. You could call it the announcer jinx for... Dylan down there at ice level. As <laughs> you mentioned our predictions were for a goal the way this game was going, but sure enough, the yeah. game ends up proving us wrong. Dylan, 0 for 1. Yeah, guys, and just so you know, um, got a report here. Lucas Ducups has just left this game and heads back to the locker room after that whistle. Don't have any more information on it for you guys yet. Big loss. Ducups, one of the better players on this team. Providence really needed him. We'll get an update as we hear it. Yeah, guys, he's back. He just needed a new blade. And just as quickly as we heard he was gone, that's how quickly he comes back. 2.30 left here in the opener. Laughlin behind the net, he'll play it. Dishes it off to his defenseman, Hutch Dunley. As it's the Wolfpack trying to get it out of their own zone. Eventually they do, long stretch pass. No options there, and another icing. The puck will come down the length of the ice once again. Looked like that puck was slowing down a little bit already. We got two minutes to go in the first period. Dylan, maybe you can help us out with the ice conditions a little bit, but it looks like it's already getting chewed up again. Teams are playing so fast, it's really no surprise to see it. Yeah, guys, and I'm right down here to your right by the Celtics net, and you can already see a lot of snow pile up, especially here late in the first period. It just seems like there's a lot more snow on the ice than we're used to. And of course, here in the CCHL, you only get one Zamboni intermission after the second period. So we'll see how that progresses as we get late into the second. A shot there. Just goes over the glove of Laughlin. It's Felice trying to even the odds. He can't. But the first time the, the Celtics have really gotten a chance there since that early stage of the power play. But dumping it down is Victor Ventura. Quickly recovering is Zadakis, who tries to find an option off the boards. Can't really find anyone. But quickly to the puck is Felice, trying to apply a little bit of pressure. And the Celtics will dump it down and make the Wolfpack think about it a little bit. As in the neutral zone, Providence has played really, really well. 
not allowing much to get through, but that one does. A nice spin move. But coming the other way on a two-on-one are the Celtics. A pass, a shot, and a save! And it stays out. Laughlin on his head. Stops Finn Harris. And the advantage still in favor of the Wolfpack. I'm not sure if I heard a post as well in that situation on that save from Laughlin. Centering pass. Shot goes wide to the right of Laughlin. And it's the Providence Celtics applying pressure here late in the period. Andrew, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I would thought the same thing as you. A rush here, a shot, a save by Laughlin. He denies Ramos. Laughlin takes a tumble, a pass to the point. Gets outside of the zone and a much needed breather for the netminder. As the puck goes through, no icing, 44 seconds left here in the opener. And right now, if you're the Wolfpack, you're trying to survive. A long stretch pass, finding it. Nice move inside. Another move, not getting a shot there is Corbin Klein, but he finds the puck once again. Centering pass doesn't get through. Goes off the ear. But looks like we'll get a penalty here, a slash. As Pavic denies another one, but falling down to the ice is Corbin Klein. And the Wolfpack will have a power play. Looks like it's going to be Zadakis getting the slashing iron. Corbin Klein's a little slow to get up, but looks like he's all right now. With 26 seconds to go here in the first period, the Wolfpack are going to head to the power play. And it looks like Corbin Klein is good enough to stay out there for these final 26 seconds. You guys, it didn't take long for the Wolfpack to convert on the power play the first time around. They're trying to try and go two for two here. As Ventura tries to win the draw, he does, wins it back. Another point-to-point -point pass. That one finds its way through, but no net. As getting it down to Ventura, stretch pass. Trying to find Parole and can't. And Providence will get it out with 10 seconds left here in the opener. Playing it as Laughlin. And with five seconds left. Looks like Ventura will hold on to it. And that'll do. Through one period. A crazy first 10 minutes. But it's 3-2 in favor of the San Ignatius Wolfpack who look to repeat as Kennedy Cup champions. Yeah, Rudy, you mentioned it. First period. Full of excitement, back and forth, chances for both teams just going punch for punch, really. And at the end, it's going to be St. Ignatius leading 3-2 to two and on the power play. But prior to that power play, I'd say for a good two-minute stretch, it was nothing but chances for the Providence Celtics. Mentioned it, Ethan Laughlin was standing on his head for that last, again, minute to two minutes before the power play. Couldn't be more excited for the rest of this game. What's it going to bring? The speed that we have is truly phenomenal and you expect nothing less than the Kennedy Cup Finals. And yeah, Andrew, you said it. I mean, I just took another look at the shots on goal. Remember, it was 17 to 8 St. Ignatius on my last update. And they've got it at 20 to 19 St. Ignatius at this point. Back and forth hockey here at the Arctic Ice Arena. It is just bound to be another classic game here. One of the most storied tournaments in all of High school hockey here. It's the Kennedy Cup game two. St. Ignatius leads one to nothing. You know, we, we talk about St. Ignatius who is on the power play right now. We have to talk about the two stars. They're on the 2023 All-State team, Corbin Klein and Jack Peralt. These two on the power play are absolute money. Yeah, we saw that in that first power play goal. It was Corbin Klein under the net making a no-look feed to Jack Peralt. You mentioned they're on that All-State team just speaks to how well these players have been playing throughout the entire year, of course, voted on by the coaches, the All-State team. So they're not only getting the respect from their coaches or us up here in the booth, but from the coaches throughout the entire state of Illinois. As they await the goalies to be ready, the referee blows his whistle. And just as quickly as we concluded play, we're going to get things going right here on the CCHL Network on JM Media. The second period is underway here in Orland Park. Three to two in favor of the Wolfpack. The Wolfpack with a minute and a half of power play time. With the puck now is Steinloff. Dishes it off to Ventura. Ventura a long way to the other end as it's the Providence Celtics applying more pressure in their defensive zone. And you see the netminder there, Ethan Laughlin, telling them to settle down, play your game. But it's Steinloff with a little bit of space here. Trying to find an option. Does. Another pass. 
Doesn't get through, and Ventura has it. Trying to get it through. Deflected, but doesn't make its way to the net. Nice spin move there by Corbin Klein, but he gets knocked down, and that'll be another penalty in favor of the Celtics, a five on three for just a, just a little less than a minute. Yeah, we see the craftiness of Corbin Klein. We see a spin move there, and then a chip around on the boards as he looks to sidestep. I believe that is Tom Dukup's, and then Dukup's just gets his stick. And they're at the feet of Corbin Klein, takes him down in 51 seconds of five on three time. Here for the St. Ignatius Wolfpack, gonna have to be an extraordinary effort from the Celtics to keep this game here at three to two. A very dangerous Wolfpack offense. They've been that way all season, 21-3 and oh. With the puck now is Kazmala. Kazmala takes a tumble but gets the pass off before he does. With the puck there is Ventura. Ventura finds an option, Steinloff. Shot, that one gets blocked. As it's Travis Breyer laying down the body. 30 seconds left on one power play and an Aaron pass recovered just fine by Cameron Kozmala leading the rush. Of course, is Steinloff. Steinloff gets it deep, trying to play it there. It is Andrew Pavic, he can't. Once again is Ventura, Ventura. Settles for a pass to Reif, Reif. Pass deep, finds Kazmala, Kazmala back at the wing, one man back out of the zone, backhanded pass, denied there by Pavic, and a stretch pass, could have been a breakaway, but doesn't, recovering just fine. Behind the net there is Laughlin who plays it. First power play over for St. Ignatius, five on four now. Ventura, he's been out there a while, trying to find an option, settles for a pass in front, a pass to the left of the Celtic netminder. Another pass there by Steinloff. Gets through, no options there available. As it's it's really a very impressive outing here from the PK of the Celtics, not letting anything go. And that one just beyond the reach of Luke Vega. You mentioned very impressive, very active sticks from the Celtics. As that puck looks like it's gets shot out of play, but they are all in the passing lanes really denying all sorts of passes where we saw the passing on that first power play for St. Ignatius take over. A, good, a very big adjustment for the Celtics in order to shut down those passing lanes, making it that much tougher on St. Ignatius. 20 seconds left here on the power play just a couple minutes into this period, 14-36 left in the middle stanza. Puck in deep, it's Chinlin out the draw. We'll try to win it back. Doesn't even really try. Not really sure he timed it up well, but keeping it in the zone. Are the Wolfpack, Scheinlin trying to find an option in front. Can't, gets through, but it finds its way back to the defense. Behind the bet, behind the net is Ch uh, Chinlin. And just like that, we're all square here. All even, five on five. They kill a five on three. And the Celtics have all five. Back on the ice, but the pressure still being applied there by the Wolfpack. And that'll force Laughlin to squeeze, and he'll snow him. Not sure if the refs will let that one pass. Tense moments here. They're very interesting to do that to the netminder. Take another look. Yeah, we see the replay of it. I'm not sure if we're going to get a call, though, as it's almost certain when you see a player do that, you're going to see some sort of unsportsmanlike conduct called, but it looks at first that Carson Burst is going to get away with that unscathed. Very surprised to see no call there. Yeah, nope. the referee went over to the Providence bench, had something to say to Nick Ichancio. Obviously not sure what it was, but you said it, Andrew. We'll stay five on five. As the puck goes back to St. Ignatius, they'll try to get out of their zone. It eventually does in the neutral zone, getting it deep. Once again, Isidakis, St. Ignatius, trying to get it back into that offensive zone. Neutral zone play has been very, very strong as we get another whistle here. Must have gone out of play. But you know, you know th that's how you win games. You play in the neutral zone. You have to beat them off the rush. You know, sometimes these coaches, if they play a 1-3-1, it's very hard to get through the neutral zone. If they play a 2-1-2, even much more so. So it's one of those things where you have to win on the rush. I don't know, what do you think about something like that? 
Yeah, we've really seen that rush style take over high school hockey in Illinois, not only in the Catholic League here, also in the Scholastic Hockey League as well. You just see such fast-paced games now all throughout the entire state. Such an emphasis on the rush, as you mentioned. A shot from the point blasted there by DeCups. Gets blocked, and the Wolfpack once again get it out of the zone. Zadakis gets it deep. As it's Charlie Reif forced to play it there. Turning it over, the Celtics have possession. Deep in the zone is Felice. Felice trying to find an option. Gets it in front. And that one whisked away by the blade of Laughlin. Going the other way now are the Wolfpack. Centering pass. Doesn't get through. It's Owen Ray trying to find who has the puck now. DJ Fensel. A little bit of a hold there. Deep in the zone. Coming the other way are the Celtics. They get it out of the zone at the very least, but nothing further than that. As it's the Wolfpack once again with a breakout and a huge hit there. Whoa. Physicality at its finest. Playoff hockey, baby. That's going to happen. Looks like that was Tom Dukeups on Tiernan Ryan, that massive hit. Uh-oh, a little more physicality here. Extracurriculars after the whistle. But Laughlin comes away with it. He'll squeeze. You mentioned the physicality really picking up here. A little bit before that big hit, but we're going to get to see a look of it right here. Dukeups just steps up right into Tiernan Ryan. And again, more hits from Providence as they look to take that puck to the front of the net there. Looks like we also see Finn Harris as well with the St. Ignatius defender in front of the net. Emotions high. It's the fifth time these teams have played each other here in the Chicago Catholic League. You're going to get to see some of that, especially when these teams now play in the second game in a row. Almost have to expect that to happen in games like this. Harris wins the draw, trying to get it deep is Schwarz, and he does, but quickly with the puck is Victor Ventura, who has to settle for a shot there, and that one easily stopped by Andrew Pavich. You mentioned it easily stopped there, just over the blue line, a little wrist shot from St. Ignatius. It's going to take a lot more to beat Andrew Pavich here today. Deep in the Celtic zone is another draw here, Chinland. Takes on Finn Harris, and so Chinlin will have to uh, substitute here as Ventura will have to take the draw. Looks like two changes here. It's a shot from the point. That one deflected in front by the stick of Haynes, but he deflects it wide. More play here in the neutral zone as another hit there in favor of the Celtics. As this game has really slowed down in scoring, but not in physicality as potential offside, and it sure is. We'll come back to the dot. You mentioned both teams now. It was really Providence that picked up that physicality at first, but we see St. Ignatius stepping up to the table as well. Not what Everybody you're seeing right now, a little bit of a hit whenever they're brushing by somebody with the puck, making sure the other guy feels you at this point in the game. Once one team, of course, picks up that physicality, it's almost human nature that the other team's gonna start picking it up as well. Yeah. Oliver and Chinlin. Rudy, we're, we're now closing in on 13 minutes of playing time without a goal scored after five in the opening 10. That's that, 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 those first you know 10 minutes were really hectic and we thought that was gonna really set the table for what the rest of the game was gonna really look like, but I couldn't have predicted how much physicality we would've seen. I mean, I, I know it's playoff hockey, I know, but after the amount of goals that we saw in the opener, it really felt like it was gonna be one of those games as it's Ventura trying to lead the rush quickly taken out by Zdeikis, who tries to get it out of the zone. They can't. Once again with the puck are the Celtics, who eventually get possession. And once again, Zdeikis trying to lead the rush, trying to get around. A little bit of physicality there. And the Celtics get it in deep. And the Wolfpack on their heels a little bit. As it's Ventura. Ventura tries to get it out. Can't get it through Felice. And another penalty there. It's going to be Burris. And all the momentum they had quickly gone. And guys, you know, looks like we're going to get, sorry, Dylan, to cut you off. Looks like we're going to get a penalty called on St. Ignatius as well. Looks like it's going to be Simon Moynihan. They're calling him for an unsportsmanlike conduct because you're going to see the hit there from Carson Burris. 
They were getting away with late hits already. That was a really big hit delivered late. And his hands came up from Carson Burst. So definitely by the letter of the law, it's a penalty. They've been letting a lot go so far early in this game. But again, you get the response from saying Nation. That's going to even things back up at five on five. Opportunity missed there for St. Ignatius, who could have had a power play. A shot there finds Laughlin. Looks to have crossed him up just a little bit, but he recovers just fine. And the refs are starting to really start to play a little bit of a factor in this game. Starting to tell everybody, all right, simmer it down, bring it back. Yeah, and I would say I have to agree with the officials on this one. As, as much as we like the physicality in the playoff hockey, at, at some point you have to call the rule book and can't let this Absolutely. game get out of hand. Felice tries to get it through. Doesn't get all the way there. Trying to get the rebound is Felice. Felice dishes it off. Shot from the point. Finds. Gets through, but a save by Laughlin. And that one gets out. Nearly hits us. But we're good. Yeah, thankfully we have the little protective barricade here in front of us to knock that puck down. But Rudy, I want to take a second to highlight, since this physical play has picked up, you mentioned the Wolfpack have seen like they're on their heels maybe a little bit. This physical play has really thrown them off of their game. We see a lot more time here in the offensive zone for Providence as I think it's in the back of the Wolfpack's mind knowing that they're going to get hit whenever they get the puck now at this point. Harris loses the draw because Mala tries to get it out. Finds another option there in Luke Vega. And it's the Wolfpack the other way. Finding a little bit of space there is Vega. Vega short side. Denied. There by the blocker and looks like we'll get another penalty. As we await the call here, a quick stoppage. Not really sure what the call is. The net is dislodged. And it looked, it looked like the referee signaled something indicating a penalty, but it looks like we'll stay five on five as we take another look at the save. Yeah, and guys, you know, I'm, I'm over it here. It looked like the net did get dislodged oh, there on the replay, but you see Tom Dukups give a shot to Tiernan Ryan. That went uncalled by the officials. As a shot there, nearly trouble for Providence, but they get possession back here deep in the zone, trying to find Gans there. It is Hansel. As getting it deep once again is Zadakis. Zadakis finds Hansel. Hansel. Deep in the heart of the St. Ignatius zone. Getting it out, eventually finding it is Steinloff. And Steinloff leads the rush to Vega. Vega gets it deep. Beating everybody to the puck is Egan Ryan. Egan Ryan looking for an option in front. Can't find anyone. Good idea there from Egan Ryan. He had Corbin Klein open in front of the net. Pass just hit off the side of the net, though. A power move inside. Look like it could have gone in. A centering pass. A look here for the Wolfpack. And quickly tied up by Providence. Another look here. A pass. A little bit of space. Backhanded pass. That one deflected there by Pavich with the stick. Tense moments here. A shot from the point. Denied by Pavich. The stick up to the task. And it's St. Ignatius applying the pressure here. As it's Steinloff getting it through. That one blocked. Another shot deflected in front. Goes wide. Might have gone off the glove of Pavich, Steinloff once again trying to find an option finds Peral, Peral a shot from the point goes off a couple of bodies coming away with it is Castleton who plays it and Laughlin has it looking for the stretch pass eventually does get it finds Peral and Peral leads the rush the highest scoring defenseman for this Wolfpack team this season and also the captain as Ignatius can't really seem to keep it in the zone, losing it is Tunin Ryan. How often do we see him make a mistake? Not very much. As getting it deep there is Zadakis, but quickly recovered there. A shot saved by Laughlin. He does eyes. Zadakis and a three on two the other way if they hurry. With the puck now is Ryan. Great back check there from Vinny Felice. As a race to the puck is won there by Schwarz, but St. Ignatius comes away with it. Deep in the zone, looking for someone to pass to. Not a lot of space there. A lot of things being closed out. Options very rare, but coming away with it here is Mastro. Mastro trying to use the screen to his advantage on the shot. Doesn't get through. Quickly blocked there. Long stretch pass. Finds Reiner. Reiner. Couldn't get it to anyone. Reef has to settle. Ooh, a weird bounce in front. Pavic gets it. No problem. 
A lot trickier than it looks, folks. Still applying pressure as the Wolfpack looking for a pass in front. Couldn't find anyone. The rebound saved there by Pavic. As Pavic facing a lot of pressure, but he's doing just fine here. As with the puck now, as Providence getting it deep as Oliver, he needs a change. And a long dish. Hops over the stick of DJ Fensel. Potential three on two here if they hurry, but just over the blade of one of the Celtics was the Aaron pass there. And coming away with it is the defenseman, Hodge Dunlay. Trying to get it deep is this St. Ignatius Wolfpack team. But the Celtics do it instead. They get it deep, goes off the stick there. Trying to find an option in front. Oh my goodness, and a hit from behind. They were gonna call that. It was dirty. And St. Ignatius will go back to the power play. Two minutes for a check from behind. Looks like a cross check. Yeah, it looks like we're only gonna get the cross checking call, so no 10 minute misconduct. Attached to the penalty there. It looks like, I think it was Joe Ramos. But it looked like, yeah, he took that, the stick and really got the St. Ignatius player right in the side oblique area which is really exposed in that hockey pad. And you can definitely, I feel that one up here, just cannot feel good for that St. Ignatius <laughs> player. And before that, though, physical play really lightened up, and we saw St. Ignatius take over the game again in that offensive zone, really. It's that physical play so far for Providence that's really been the driving factor for them. But the referees are going to call penalties. That physical play can only go so far that it's going to keep hurting the Celtics. Ventura wins the draw. Centering pass. Doesn't find anyone, Kazmala with it once again. Kazmala has a little bit of space, tries to tee one up. Deflected and goes out of play. 17 seconds into this man advantage. Guys, just a quick update on the shots on goal. St. Ignatius with the lead, only by one, 29 to 28. So plenty of shots on target here in this game. And, and when you look at the difference just between the first and the second, a lot more neutral zone play, a lot more momentum based in the first where really they were all firing on all cylinders. But here, play has slowed down, but the physicality hasn't. And neither has the tactical play of both teams as it's Ignatius getting a shot there. That one gets blocked. The music is still playing. The party never stops here at the Arctic Ice Arena. Potential two on one here. It's Burris centering pass. Oh, what a sensational save by Ethan Laughlin. On the power play, up to the task, is you, the young netminder. You mentioned just a great save. It looked like that puck actually bounced over the St. Ignatius defender, and it found Vinny Felice, I believe, on the back door, on the feed from Carson Burris, but McLaughlin pushes from post to post just enough to make that save to keep his team up one. Make sure you remember that one. If Ignatius can find a way to finish this game, what a great save there by Laughlin when the team needs it most. And here comes the offense the other way, getting it deep. With the puck is Corbin Klein, who lets it breeze past him. As Klein has it, has an option in front, decides to take it himself, shot, save, rebound, no good. And it's Ventura again, up to the task is Pavic. Ventura fires it, saved by Pavic. And trying to get it out of the zone, and doing so is Ducups, actually doesn't, stays in. As it's Providence trying to slow things down, they finally do get out of the zone. 19 seconds left here in the man advantage. 440 left in the period. We see that flurry of chances for the Wolfpack really stem from Corbin Klein on the power play. We were talking before the game, I mentioned he really plays that Matthew Kachuk type of role, especially in front of the net. Potential breakaway here for Providence. Fires it, another save by Laughlin. He denies Nico Felice. And there will be a penalty on St. Ignatius. Felice forces the Wolfpack to take a cross check. And they'll get a power play. You guys, you saw Charlie Reef was the defender there racing after the Providence skater on that breakaway. I'm here on the other side of the rink. I'm not sure, did he throw his stick there? Is that what the penalty's for? It looks like a cross check after the play. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get a replay here, Dylan. I don't think he threw his stick. I think it just got, he was going for a poke check. As of like Nico Felice was going for a shot. And then you see the hands come up high there, although he does not have a stick, so it's really tough in that situation. But I think it's the right call by the letter of the law to call a roughing there. 
as his hands did come up, get him in the head type area from behind as well. Although Charlie Reef did not agree with the call. Harris, back to the point with Zadekas. Zadekas trying to find Ramos and does. Save, rebound, another save off the toe. Oh, Ethan Laughlin take a bow. What a save to keep the game at three to two. And here comes Providence. I apologize, St. Ignatius the other way. We're gonna have to take a look at that one. Yeah, what a sequence. I think the original deflection was from a St. Ignatius player and Laughlin still made the save. As Ramos trying to get it out into the offensive zone, they can't. And it goes out of play, we'll get a whistle here. A little extracurriculars from Gracie and Ramos. So let's see if we can get another look at that sequence in front of Laughlin. I believe it goes off of number 32. Yep, with a pad save, and then another save. Looks and like it goes off the right skate. Yeah, right or left skate. There. And then it actually looks like it got blocked too by number 32 on St. Ignatius. That's Egan Ryan. And then Finn Harris batted out of midair, but it just missed the post by maybe one, two, three inches wide. What a sequence. Ethan Laughlin standing on his head, three to two with 315, but leading the rush here is Burris, and another save there by Laughlin. As Burris gets Puck back in his possession, finds Felice. Felice settles for a pass to the point to Breyer. Breyer back to Felice. Can't corral it, and St. Ignatius gets it out of danger. Yeah, that pass just not in the wheelhouse of Nico Felice. Tough reception for him and led to the turnover. A little bit of a mistake there from Andrew Pavic. How often, or how, how, how tense moments can be there as the shot gets blocked there as Providence trying to get something going here. 25 seconds left on the man advantage. With the puck is Felice. Felice teeing one up is Breyer, but that one gets blocked. St. Ignatius Bench loves the block there from Hutch Dunley. Breyer settles for a pass over to Felice. Felice finding his brother. A long stretch pass. Another one. The net is dislodged. And play will halt. Beautiful passing there. But just before a shot could be taken, the net goes off its moorings. Yeah, you see the net just come off there as Laughlin's trying to push off. You mentioned the great passing, but nothing that no shots really to the net on that beautiful passing, which it's so important to get a shot on net, although passing the pucks around great, because then you also get the rebound opportunities, the second chances, the deflections. That's how the offense really can be created even more. Whereas if you're just passing the puck around on the outside, waiting for that perfect opportunity, there's a lot the other team can do to prevent you from scoring. A shot there off the draw by Joe Ramos. Doesn't find any twine as Ignatius gets it out, and we're all square here with two minutes left in the second period. Remember, we are going to get an ice cut here after this period. We didn't get one after the first, but the ice looks like it's in dire need of a little bit of help here. And they're going to get it as potential uh, interference not called there, but... Coming away with it is the Wolfpack. The shot gets blocked there by Fensel. As Fensel trying to find Owen Ray. A little bit of a tie up there. Providence comes away with it. They dump. Not enough here, but a lot of speed on the forecheck by Joe Ramos. And he comes away with it. Almost comes away with it. It's Felice that has it instead. Felice at the wing. Trying to get something going here. Felice fires it, save. Another shot. Oh, and that one goes just wide. As Travis Breyer gets it through, and Laughlin will squeeze it up and slow things down. I think Ethan Laughlin got a piece of this pass that was headed to the back door from Vinny Felice. If we can get another look at it, and that just that small nick of the puck was enough that this Providence player could not finish that back door feed. Andrew, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say it if you didn't. Great minds think alike. You two seem to be firing on all cylinders. My goodness. A minute 20. At the draw is Felice. And Tune and Ryan. Felice gets the better of him. Shot save there by Laughlin. Shot from the point there from Breyer. Doesn't get through. And we're going to get another power play for the Providence Catholic Celtics. Let you know what the call is as soon as we uh, see any indication. But for now, just know 
another man advantage. It's going to be interference. I'm not exactly sure on who was. There were four players over there. But the St. Ignatius player delivered the hit onto the Providence player that did not have the puck. I believe, again, this will be another right call from the officials. Should be interference as that Providence player never even had possession of the puck when he got hit. Once again, this Providence offense trying to get something cooking. As if they don't, it'll bleed into the final period. But Felice gets it through. Another save there by Laughlin. Almost finds someone there on a breakaway. A pass. A shot. Goes wide. That time Felice couldn't get anything on net. And now it's Burris. Burris back to Felice. Felice tries to get one through. Oh, it does get through. And Laughlin will squeeze. And a lot of extracurriculars after the whistle as Laughlin did not take a liking to the chop that he received. I think Laughlin was just as surprised to see that puck get through as we were, as a desperation dropped down to the butterfly him. You see it right there at the very last second, and he's able to get his glove onto it before Tom Dukups can get to it in front of the net. 50 seconds left in the middle period. As it's St. Ignatius winning the draw, but quickly applying pressure are the Celtics. A chance there, another save by Laughlin. We see a strong take to the front of the net there from below the net. Providence needs to get more guys in front of the net, especially on this power play, being ready for those rebound opportunities. I think that's where the goals are going to be found for them here on the power play. St. Ignatius trying to kill a little bit of time, trying to survive. Has an option there. Potential breakaway just beyond the reach of Kazmala. But a nice move there. He still has possession. And gets it deep into the zone and eventually finds Tiernan Ryan. As it's Ryan trying to get the centering pass. Can't get it. Coming the other way is Burris. Burris with a quick, quick move. Burris has a little bit of space. Backhanded shot goes wide. And getting it, trying to get it out is St. Ignatius, and they can't. Four seconds left. That one deflected. And another save there by Laughlin with 2.8 left in the period. You mentioned a 2.8. Whatever type of faceoff play Providence head coach Nick Ichancio has in the bag of tricks, you have to assume they're going to throw that out here now. Whereas if you're St. Ignatius, such a crucial faceoff here, you cannot let this puck get to the front of the net at any cost. As Felice will do, try, try to do just that. And they'll fall on it. And that'll take us to the third. Through two periods, it's 3-2 to two in favor of St. Ignatius. The Wolfpack, a mere 17 minutes from destiny here at the Arctic Ice Arena through two. I mean, what are you, what are you thinking here as, as the Wolfpack go into the, uh, into the intermission with the lead? I think both teams have to be happy with the way that they're playing. We mentioned the physical play picked up in the second period. I think the ice conditions also had the reason for a little bit of the slowdown in the second period. I expect when this third period picks up, the game to be just as fast. We'll have to see what type of adjustments they make if St. Ignatius goes into more of a defensive shell, if Providence wants to take a few more chances. It'll be very exciting to see what goes on in this third period, Rudy. Yeah, St. Ignatius was dominating through the first period, but that second period was practically all Providence. I mean, 24-14. to 14 uh, were the shots, and I think my mic cut out there. So 24 to 14 in the second, shots on goal in favor of Providence. They're now at 43 shots in total so far in this game. Through two, it's three to two. St. Ignatius, Providence Catholic. We'll be right back here for the third. It's gonna be a classic, stick around.
Welcome back to Arctic Ice Arena. The San Ignatius Wolfpack, the Providence Celtics, number one against number two. It's 3-2 through two periods. Down at ice level, Dylan Ward with the head coach of the number one team in the CCHL, Spencer Montgomery. Take it away. Thank you, Rudy. Coach, there were five goals in the opening ten minutes of this game, nothing since. In what way do you think it's tightened up down there? Yeah, we, we've got nothing but respect for their program. We knew they were going to push hard, kind of a frenzied start to the game, and, and then we settled in defensively. Uh, that's where it's going to turn around for us. We need to defend 200-foot game, make sure our forwards are waiting to, before they leave the zone, make sure that puck gets out. Providence was able to get 24 shots on goal at the end of the second period. What needs to tighten up defensively in that aspect? We're going to be in shot, we're going to be in shot lane, sacrificing the body, Try to remain physical, uh, and we're going to try to keep them to the outside for the shots. Uh, we know the onslaught's coming. We're going to be prepared. Uh, this is what it takes to win a championship. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you this right now. If Spencer Montgomery was my coach, I would run through a wall for that man. He is ready to go. I can't imagine anything different from his team. As we look to the third, what do you have to make of his answers as we approach the final 17? You took the words right out of my mouth. I could not agree more. His interview was picture perfect, what I would want out of a coach. He mentioned you have to do what it takes to win. They're really going to lock it down defensively. They know that Providence is going to push as hard as they possibly can. and They're going to have to bring even more of a fight than Providence. I think he's spot on, in my opinion, well about they have to play a full 200-foot defensive game. Their forwards can't be caught leaking out of the zone before the puck gets out of the zone. It's all about wanting to win this game, doing whatever it takes. If you haven't noticed by now, Providence... Wearing the black and gold and the black and green, and Saint Ignatius wearing those white and maroon. Providence will be on the power the play for the first 40 seconds this period as well. As Providence leading the rush is Felice. Felice has a little bit of space to get something going. And he'll carry it all the way up to the point. Pass down to Felice. Once again, Briar. Briar, pass in front. Trying to find Burris, but Burris fans on the potential tip in. A nice pass there. Another look here. Oh, oh, they score! It looked like Laughlin got a chunk of it. Not enough. We're all square at three. Rudy, I think Ethan Laughlin lost his edge. I'm not sure if we're able to see it. You'll see it right here. Just loses his footing. He's not able to push off that left leg. We get a great look of it right there. Great job by our cameraman and our technical producer, Jimmy the Wiz Olsen, to give us this replay. But Carson Burris gets that puck, and he has a wide open four by six. And Ethan Laufa makes a desperation dive. And you mentioned almost one of the greatest saves I probably had ever seen if it was made. But he does not get enough of that puck, and it ends up deflecting into the net. And just about 40 seconds into this third period, Providence has tied it. Less than a minute in. We're all square. Another look there, a rebound. Oh, what a save by Andrew Pavich. She responds with a pad save of his own. And fresh out of the locker rooms after this intermission, both teams wasting no time getting back to it. We see the right pad from Andrew Pavich and then the left pad as well as that net gets pushed off. He denies Steinloff there, but Steinloff wins that draw. Steinloff, another turnover here, a potential two on O. Here come the Celtics, save, made by Laughlin. He denies Joe Ramos. And we remain at three to three. What a start to this period. Both teams back and forth. That'll be an icing call. The puck goes back down the other way as the first minute and a half, all Celtics. And Looks like Joe three Ramos three. was trying to go over the right shoulder, I think, of Ethan Laughlin. Looks like he got maybe his helmet or that chest area on Ethan Laughlin on that breakaway to keep things tied 3-3. Three to three. Castleton loses that draw to Colin Shinlin. And St. Ignatius comes down a long, big jump there from the puck. And Pavich says no problem. Guys, just want to circle back to what we were talking about right before the period started. St. Ignatius head coach Spencer Montgomery, he was an assistant last season, uh, takes the head coach role after Matt Smith, the former head coach, 
goes over to the Buffalo Sabres as the video coach. So St. Ignatius obviously trying to repeat as Kennedy Cup champions, but it would be Coach Montgomery's first as the leader of the bench. Ventura gets it through, takes a little bit of a hop, goes wide. As Ventura couldn't get anything going there as the Celtics trying to get it in to their offensive zone. They can't, comes down the length of the ice, applying the forecheck as Chinlin, but beating everyone to the puck there is the Cups. As it swores the nice lead pass and the Celtics will dump it in and get a change. But the four checker Felice applying a little bit of pressure on the Wolfpack as they try to get the breakout going. They eventually do. Dumping it deep there is Gracie. Gracie quickly met with the puck is Kazmala. Kazmala back to Gracie, a centering pass. Nobody there. But with the puck now is Tunin Ryan. Ooh, gets tripped there. No call. The Celtics dodge a bullet there as that one almost went out of play, but it does, it stays in. It's Gracie once again with the puck. Leading the rush here is Ryan. Ryan dishes it off, a shot! Goes just wide, the rebound! Gets stuck up in the mesh. And a souvenir for a lucky fan. I wanna go back to that point you brought up earlier. I think the Celtics for surely got away with one as the stick got into the skates of Tiernan and Ryan and seemed like what really to me was a textbook tripping call. Not really sure how it was not called, but it's gonna remain five on five here in the third period. Steinloff at the draw. Faces Finn Harris, Harris gets the better. Of the Wolfpack, center. Shot from the point, wide, not enough on it. Steinloff with possession, tries to get the centering pass doesn't get all the way through. A shot from the point, deflected, should stay in the zone. As that one deflected, it's Parole that gets his shot tonight. After that goal by Providence, we had a little bit of back and forth play, but these last, I'd say, minute, minute and a half, two minutes, really been all St. Ignatius. They've taken the fight back to Providence here in this third period, taking control of this game again. Providence wins the draw there. A check from behind won't be called there as once again with the puck is Steinloff. He gets some wood on it, but that one denied by Pavich. We'll have a power, uh, I apologize, we'll have a face off to the left of the netminder. It's going to be the third straight face off to the left of Andrew Pavich here as Providence has done a good job of winning the prior two, but they've been not able to get the puck out of their zone despite winning those face offs. Another face-off win for the Wolfpack. That one from the point, deflected! A great pad save there by Pavich. That's trying to get it out, are the Celtics? They do. Hops over the stick. Jack Perrault. And who was that deflection? None other than Corbin Klein. I mentioned it, just like that Matthew Kachuk type player, always in front of the net. Perrault gets it deep, quickly with the puck is Zdeikas. Zdeikas trying to get it out, but Steinloff gets a chip on it. The centering pass gets blocked, still in the zone. Potential three on two the other way if they hurry. Here come the Celtics, but quickly there is Steinloff using his speed to his advantage. As the centering pass trying to find Felice, doesn't get through. And a potential breakaway here if they get through, but they don't. As with the puck is Lucas Ducups. And Ducups quickly turns it over with the puck is Dunley. Dunley passes to the neutral zone. Three on two if they hurry. And a quick stick there. By it looked like it was Moraskas. And a weird rebound there. But Moraskas gets it out of danger. Once again, it's the Wolfpack applying pressure. Trying to get something going there was Fensel. But Fensel couldn't get in to that Providence zone. Nice pass. Fensel finds himself with the puck once again. Tries to get it deep and does. First person to get to the puck will be a Wolfpack member. That's Owen Ray. Lucas Ducups, once again with it, gets it down the length of the ice. And that'll be an icing call. 12.08 left in the final period. Three again, three. really just been all saying Nacious. I don't think Ethan Laughlin's seen a shot in a good three minutes here in this third period as since the I, goal yeah pretty much since the goal is saying nations or no the uh the breakaway chance right oh, after the right, goal as well right. but after that no offense really generated from the celtics all saying ignatius again and most of that time's been in the providence end hansel 
Tries to beat everyone to the puck. But it's Austin Haynes that gets there. Another save there by Laughlin. And just as if we queued him up, he gets his first since the breakaway. And the net was dislodged there. He gets it back in a tip-top shape. Odd man rush the other way here for the Wolfpack. Centering shot denied there. Ventura nearly had him on the far side. And that should be a trip. Looks like they won't call it. That one doesn't get through. A nice block there by Schwarz. Getting it deep is St. Ignatius. That one doesn't seem to get out of the zone there. Centering pass, no one there. As it's Ventura trying to apply pressure. And here comes Providence the other way. Finn Harris all by his lonesome deep in that zone. Has an option in front if he hurries, but didn't exactly see him. At Castleton all by himself. And we're going to get a penalty here. Some extracurriculars. As it looks like, it looks like St. Ignatius is going to go on a power play here. Yeah, we didn't really have a good view of it up in that corner from the booth. Dylan, maybe you had a better view of it. Can help us out with what happened. Guys, I'm going to be completely honest. I was looking at my program <laughs> when that happened. I did not get a view of that at all. That's all right. That's all right. Well, well all we do know is that the man advantage goes to the team in white. The Wolfpack will have two minutes to try to regain the lead. 11.06 left here. They get a look. That one beats the netminder. The wraparound. Oh, what a defensive play by Travis Breyer. And the net gets dislodged, but a sure goal denied there by the stick of Breyer. You mentioned it. Number seven in black, Travis Breyer. Game-saving, goal-saving play. As also a great save right off the faceoff on Corbin Klein for Andrew Pavich. He thinks he has it. But then you get a look at the play from Travis Breyer. By the way, the penalty is being credited to number 27 on Providence, Aiden Castleton. Getting it out of the zone are the Celtics. How many times do we have to say it? Playoff hockey, baby. It's so tense, but you got to love the energy here at the Arctic Ice Arena. I know I do. As St. Ignatius gets it deep, and they'll try to set up shop here. Finding Ventura at the point. Ventura tees one up. That one denied by the glove of Andrew Pavich. As we're just 30 seconds into the power play. Yeah, you know, after that first chance right off that faceoff, a little bit of a problem for St. Ignatius getting set up. They had it there, but they, they opted for the shot with no real traffic in front. And Pavich is going to take the whistle, make everything reset again for a faceoff. Steinloff trying to win the draw back. Can't. But Providence can't get it out with the puck now is Kazmala. Kazmala gets that one tipped, stays in play. Keeping it in is Ventura. Ventura centering pass to Steinloff. Steinloff can't get any wood on it. And now with a little bit of space is Finn Harris. And Harris will dump it down the length of the ice and look for a change. Something wrong with his helmet there. Seems to have gotten unclipped. A look here, but a turnover there. A shot goes above the blocker of Laughlin. That time it's Felice looking to set the house on fire here. 50 seconds left here on the power play. Getting it out are the Celtics. A potential two on one here. It's Felice. Shot save off the helmet of Laughlin. And Laughlin does not take lightly the contact he received after. But Laughlin takes one off the dome. Yeah, you mentioned it. Ethan Laughlin gave an extra shot there to Vinny Felice as he was passing by after Laughlin lost his helmet. Looks like he took a little bump from Vinny Felice. We're going to look at it here as we see the shot come in and completely dislodges the helmet. And a little bump, although I have to say it looks like Vinny Felice was pushed in a little bit by Jack Peralta. So you can't put all the fault there on Vinny Felice, but either way, Ethan Laughlin was not happy with him. 39 seconds left here in the man advantage. Laughlin makes the save here, but a little bit of space here come the Celtics. But quickly, it's St. Ignatius getting things back in order. 27 seconds left on the power play. Nearly a turnover there. But Providence is forechecked even on the penalty kill, paying dividends here as we approach the nine minute mark in the final period. Getting into the zone is Chinlin. Chinlin gets it deep. 
Trying to beat everyone to the puck there is Breyer, but he's quickly met there by Jackson Brosser. Trying to play it off the glass there is Schwarz. Eventually the one that gets it out is Ducups. Tom Ducups. Coming the other way is St. Ignatius. A little bit of a look here. Goes to the backhand. Centering pass, doesn't find anyone. And leading the rush there, guess who? Tiernan Ryan. He's been a constant all season long, and here he comes again on the forecheck. But beating everyone to the puck there is Maraska. Centering pass. Adding a little bit of look there is Ryan. Doesn't get the shot off in time. Quickly met by a Celtic defenseman. Mastro the other way. Beats everyone to the puck. They're playing it out in the corner. Mastro trying to get the better of two Wolfpack members. But it's St. Ignatius that comes away with it. A nice pass there gets deflected by number 25, Andrew Lannon. As Zadakis dishes it off and getting it deep into the zone is, oh my heavens, almost a shot there, but it's denied. As it looked like a very innocent dump in, and it turned into a scoring chance for the Celtics. Some physicality behind the net, getting the better of the four checker is Hutch Dunlay. And coming the other way, once again, is Peralt. Peralt plays it behind the net, looking for options. Quickly met there by two Celtics, but with the puck are the Wolfpack. Centering pass, doesn't get all the way in. A shot from the point, gets deflected, save, rebound. No good, another look, blocked. And the Celtics laying their body on the line, hoping to make something happen. They get it out as they try to survive this onslaught from the Wolfpack. Great effort there from Zadegas, blocked the shot and cleared all the way down the ice on net as well, so no icing. Fensel gets it deep. Andrew, by the way, that clear on net was their 50th shot of this game. As that'll be the 51st, met by the glove of Andrew Pavich. Seven minutes, two seconds on the clock. It is still three to three. And we see that line out there right now for Providence is the Felice brothers and Carson Burris. These guys have been flying all over the ice all game. It was the Felice brothers on the penalty kill actually that generated a few chances as well. Centering pass. Had two people there, but it's the stick of Ducups that gets it out of danger. A nice heads up play there by the defenseman. And now it's Felice. Trying to get something going. Having to dump it down is his brother, Vinny. Long stretch pass goes off the skate. Three on two if they can hurry, but quickly met by a couple of Celtics. As that'll force Pavic to slow things down. 6.29 left. It's been a quiet last two minutes here especially the way that this game has been playing. We're not seeing the amount of chances that we are earlier. We're not seeing the open style of hockey we had earlier. Both these teams really starting to lock it down as time starts to wind down here in this third period. And again, what is, could be the deciding game in the championship for the Kennedy Cup. Colin Chinlin, Noah Oliver at the dot. A little YMCA playing on the PA and it's St. Ignatius that wins the draw, getting it deep are the Wolfpack. Quickly met there by Ventura. Ventura gets the puck back in his direction, just hops beyond his stick. Potential two on one if they hurry here. Here come the Celtics the other way. A shot deep, actually looked more like a dump in to me. Opportunity potentially wasted there by the Celtics. They had numbers, but it's the Wolfpack that come away with it. A hit from behind, won't be called. As it's the Celtics applying the four check. A shot from the point there from Myroskas. And it's Laughlin that doesn't see it but no danger, crisis averted, it goes deep. As it looks like we have a broken stick here on the opposite end. You mentioned, I don't think Laughlin picked up that shot at all as it whizzed by wide and left of the net there. Fortunate break for the Wolfpack as who knows what could have happened if that shot was on net. But the Wolfpack iced that puck and we're gonna have a face off in the St. Ignatius zone for what seems like the first time in forever at this point. Like Providence's forecheck kind of wins the draw there for the Celtics. As the Celtics setting up shop here, it's Ramos who passes it back to Ducups. Ducups gets it deep to Harris. Harris quickly gets that one taken away. And the Wolfpack try 
to get something going in their direction. Once again, it's Ryan. Ryan, that one quickly met there. Looks like there's an injury there, but it gets covered there by Pavic. Oh, and there seems to be some action after. As down on the ice is Benjamin Schwarz holding his knee. I did not see what happened on that play. As Tiernan Ryan was driving that puck wide and under the net. That's when all the action happened in front of the net, and that ended with Benjamin Schwarz being down, and he's still down in front of the net. You really hate to see players go down, especially very important players in, in moments such as this. As we get a stoppage, and of course we hope everything is okay with Benjamin Schwarz. It's never easy to really move on in the conversation, especially as he gets attended to, but 526 left in this final period, and, and, and that really deflates the building right now. It was rocking, and then unfortunately uh, the stoppage has, has slowed things down significantly. Yeah, everybody's worried about the game. You know, who's going to win if this is going to go on to game three or if saying Nation's going to close this out, but all at once it's almost like a deafening silence has gone on. You can almost hear a pin drop. And all the worries now are just for Benjamin Schwarz. They'll get a little bit of assistance as the crowd salutes Schwarz. He'll need a little bit of help getting off the ice. We certainly hope everything is okay with him. And, and you have to appreciate the brotherhood aspect of, of the Celtics helping their teammate, helping their brother get off the ice as they'll try to force a game three that we hope to see him be a part of should it get there. Yeah, you can see as they were helping him off the ice, he really can't put any pressure at all. It looks like it's the right leg for Benjamin Schwarz. As thankfully now, he's safely been taken off the ice. And hopefully he can get the medical attention needed. As we're going to get back to play here, it's going to be a face-off in the offensive zone for Stang Nations with 5.26 to go. And we see that first line for Stang Nations out here. Hopefully they, for them, Spencer Montgomery thinking they can give the goal to put them ahead by one. The shot gets through and a glove saved by Pavic. It did not seem like he saw it until it was in his glove, but he gets his hand on it. And sure enough, in front of him is none other than 29 in white, Corbin Klein. I don't think he got deflection on it. But you know when you're watching St. Ignatius, there's a good chance 29 in white is going to end up in front of the net. Getting it deep, finding that set 29. Centering pass, couldn't get enough on it with Steinloff. But he wins the draw and, and gets the puck deep. Has Steinloff again in front, trying to find him. Once again was Klein as the puck finds its way back to Klein. With the puck now is Ignatius getting the shot off but getting it blocked. For the Wolfpack. Pass behind. Nice move. The wraparound and a save but the net gets dislodged. And a little bit more action in front of the net. But these guys, their chemistry is evident. They know how to play with one another. They're moving the puck really well, but it's not resulting in goals. Yeah, and I think the Wolfpack got a very fortunate break there as the puck hit off the official, and it jumped right to Corbin Klein, who immediately looked to the front of the net, then opted for the wraparound. And that just led to the net getting to sludge. But, Rudy, you mentioned it, the chemistry that they have, the way how fast they play too as well, it's really just a deadly combo. It only feels like a matter of time if they can keep this sort of pressure up. As trying to keep it in the zone, but quickly turned over there. Couldn't corral it was Carson Burris, and that will be a penalty. A man advantage with four minutes left for the Wolfpack. And the Iggy crowd feeling it. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a trip call here on Carson Burris. I could not tell if it was his stick or if it was more of a shoulder check that led to the St. Ignatius player going down to the ice, but with four minutes and 35 seconds to go, St. Ignatius is going to head to the power play. They've already converted once here today. Ventura going to try to win it back. He does. Had a lane inside. Oh, my God, a shot from the floor, from the ice. Nearly goes on net, but whisked away by Pavic, and the Celtics will clear. Nearly turned over there. 
by Laughlin. 4.18 and ticking left here in the final period, 20 seconds into the power play. The stretch pass eventually finds Jack Peralt. Peralt gets it deep. With the puck now is Ventura. Ventura. Puck finds his way back to him as well. He finds Kazmala. Kazmala shoots it. That one gets blocked by Felice. And Steinloff trying to get it deep and does. Puck finds its way back to Steinloff. Steinloff. Pass to the point. Back to Steinloff. Trying to find an option deep. Finds Ventura. Ventura centering pass. That one goes off of the stick of one of the Wolfpack members and it will go out of play. Looks like they're putting the face off inside. Might have gotten blocked. To you, Rudy, I think you mentioned went off the stick of a Wolfpack player. I'm not sure if it went off a Celtic player there. I think this faceoff should be coming out of the zone. But either way, it's going to stay inside the zone. The second unit here on the power play out for the Wolfpack. A kick pass. Finds his way over to Chinlin. Chinlin has to settle. Finds Chinlin once again. Chinlin gets it deep over to Brosser. It's Chinlin. A shot from the point. That one gets blocked. Deflected. Goes to the left. Pavic. As Providence will try to get it out, eventually get the break, and they will. 35 seconds left in the penalty kill, and that'll kill some much-needed clock. Seen some very aggressive penalty kill here from the Celtics. They have no problem putting all sorts of pressure, running around their zone, laying out, trying to block shots. Felice almost picks it away, and almost taking it away is Felice, the other one. That's Laughlin. Not exactly playing the puck super confidently there, but he's been able to avoid disaster. It's Chinlin leading the rush the other way on the penalty, on the power play, I should say, and Chinlin, no dice, gets it out. The long stretch pass, that should be icing, and it will be. As he holds his head, Nico Felice, not knowing that he had a little bit of time and space to slow things down and not force the icing. Yeah, I think it's just a tough break for Nico Fleece. The penalty ended, I, I believe, about two seconds before he got that puck. and It was just his natural reaction, thinking they were still on the penalty kill to ice the puck. But to the Ignatius's fortune, it's going to bring the faceoff back to Providence's zone. As Providence tries to get it out, they do. Couldn't find it. There was Burris, but he eventually gets possession, staying in, inside. It was Hansel. He's trying to get it deep, but fanning on it was Breyer. And now it's a foot race to the puck. Here in the defensive zone of the Celtics. That one deflected, shouldn't be an icing either way. It's quickly met there by Jack Peralt. Peralt makes the pass. Trying to get it deep there is Lannon. And he eventually does. Ducups quickly met there by Corbin Klein. And it's Ventura who passes it off to Klein. Klein. Looking for space, surveying the ice, sells for a pass to the point. That one gets through, but quickly met by the skate of Breyer. And another block for the Celtics, who are not letting anything get through. And that'll be another icing, a minute 32. You mentioned the block shots from the Celtics. We interviewed head coach for the Wolfpack, Spence Montgomery. He mentioned how his team's going to be blocking shots because of the lack of offense for Providence in this third period. It's really been Providence doing all the blocking shots as they've had to go no holds barred here, all out in order to keep the puck out of their net in this third period. Losing the draw is Chinlin. The Celtics try to get out of the zone. A little bit of a skirmish at the lineup. Potential two on one. It's Felice with his brother. Felice inside. Save there. Quickly met there by some members of the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. And here comes the other way. Tiernan Ryan, who shoots it, and another great save by Andrew Pavich, that time with the right pad. Once again, it's Ryan, who finds Ventura. Ventura dishes it, and that one goes out the zone, unable to corral it there was Kuzmala as we approach the final minute of play here in the final period, and getting it deep is Zedekis. We saw that up and down style of hockey come back for a brief moment as both teams got chances there. As we're in again icing, it was a two-on-one for the Felice brothers. 
And I think Vinny Felice just got too deep there yep. before making a decision, got too close to the goaltender, was a little bit wide, and just at the last ditch had to try to throw a shot on net, which really wasn't all that dangerous. And then coming back the other way was Tiernan Ryan, who had a real good opportunity as he was flying down these right-hand boards again. He opted for the shot, but Pavich was there with the blocker. 40 seconds left. Corralling it is Klein. Klein has an option, but he's quickly met by the stick of Breyer. That one doesn't get all the way through. As getting it deep once again is Egan Ryan. Jack Peralt hopped up in that play. Carson Burris was well behind the St. Ignatius defenseman, but the Providence Celtics could not find him. 20 seconds left. That'll be an icing. Make it 18 now. And another draw deep in the Providence end. Andrew, you just pointed out St. Ignatius outplaying Providence in this third period. You look at the shots in this third, 23 to nine in favor of the Wolfpack. And overall, the shots are close. Uh, Wolfpack now leading 57 to 52 in the game. Just a crazy amount of shots in this game, but again, the way it's been playing, not a surprise at all. Another look here late and another save by Pavich. He gets one over and bulldozed. But it looked like he was pushed into the net by one of the Celtics. Either way, it's Pavich down. He looks okay. Yeah, and sure enough, stirring the pot in front of the net, Rudy is none other than Corbin Klein. He was right there trying to get that rebound as Pavich dropped his glove on it. And the Providence players took offense to that as they then went after Klein. As you'll see right there with that last poke at the glove of Andrew Pavich is what ignited the Providence Celtics. Steinloff loses the draw there. It's Providence the other way. Ten seconds left here in the third. Getting it deep are the Celtics trying to get something in front. They can't. The clock will expire. And game two of the Kennedy Cup final is going to overtime. Rudy, I don't think there's any better way that this game can end. Overtime seems like it's the only fitting way for it to happen. It's been up and down so much. So much speed, so much skill. Just an amazing game. I can't think of a better way for it to be happening here. The clock reads 17 minutes. This game will go the distance. Nothing can end this game except a goal. We'll see if it's five on five, four on four, three on three, doesn't matter. Overtime playoff hockey here at the Arctic Ice Arena. And you're seeing the highlights now of how we got here. We saw the opening goal by Finn Harris, which quickly was a response from St. Ignatius as we got goals from Tiernan Ryan and Jack Perot on the power play. And that put saying Ignatius up two to one, but then after that we had a, another quick response as Vinny Felice got a feed from his brother Nico Felice to tie this game up at two, and this all happened in probably what was the first five minutes of the period, to which then saying Ignatius came back to make it three to two for the fifth goal in about the first 10 minutes of this game, and we thought we were gonna have a track meet of a high scoring game yeah. here, Rudy. And so that we went the whole remainder of that first period and second period scores until Providence scored about 40 seconds into this third period. Guys, obviously the rules change up a little bit here in the Kennedy Cup playoffs regarding overtime. Usually in the CCHL, they'll go four on four for four minutes. And if no result, a tie, no shootouts in this league. But obviously here, we're gonna play till a winner and we can see 17 minutes on the clock here for this first overtime period. Yeah, definitely. A change is I, I think we'll be getting five on five here as well. It looked like three on three for a second. I, whew, that would have been something. Either way, it's three to three, and someone is bound to get a fourth. The Providence Celtics, the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. Will Iggy get back to back, or will Providence force a game three? Only one way to find out. We're underway here in overtime. Getting it deep is St. Ignatius. Trying to apply a little bit of that forecheck that they're so known for. Trying to get something, something deep quickly. Turned over there in the offensive zone and leading the rush is Felice. Felice quickly met there by Jack Parole. As Providence has the puck at the point. Teeing one up, doesn't make its way through is Breyer. But with the puck now is Burris. Burris looking for an option. Finds Breyer. Breyer tees one up. Doesn't get through. Quickly met the rebound. Doesn't get through. He fans on it. It's Felice who finds 
Breyer. Breyer fires it just wide, and the game continues. Chip Bass doesn't find an option, but with the puck now is St. Ignatius. Could have been a tripping call, but not called. As the Wolfpack were looking for one there, but the best chance so far has gone to the Celtics. A pass there doesn't make its way through. Playing it off the boards are the Wolfpack. And that'll be an icing. Up and down shift there, really the better of the play. And that first shift went to Providence. We got multiple chances there at the beginning. And then St. Ignatius went the other way. And I thought Corbin Klein was tripped in my opinion. But Looked like it. Rudy, I've been calling high school games this whole year. The referees do not call a lot of penalties in overtime, really at all. Throughout all the leagues that I've seen, all sorts of scenarios, real tough to draw a penalty in overtime. Winning the draw are the Wolfpack. It's Landon who tries to get it deep. He does as the St. Ignatius Wolfpack try to apply a little bit of pressure here on the forecheck with the puck is Ventura. Ventura centering pass doesn't get through. It's the Celtics with possession now. Behind the back pass there from the defenseman, Kozmala. But it's Providence that gets it into the offensive zone. And the pass just hops over the stick. Couldn't be corralled there by St. Ignatius. But they have possession once again. It's Kozmala playing it off the boards. Back to Providence possession. They get it deep. The forecheck. Applied. Providence trying to get something in front. They can't. Long stretch pass to Ventura. Doesn't get through. Hops over the stick. And a turnover here. Having an option in front is Providence. They have a little bit of space. Can't get the shot off. Quickly tied up. A great defensive play there by Chinlin. And he has the puck for St. Ignatius. Colin Chinlin dishes it off. Fires it saved by Pavic. And the blocker up to the task. We continue play here at Arctic. And that'll be offsides. As Andrew Pavic keeps this game alive. Take a look. You mentioned we're going to replay right here. As Jack Reiner fires one, but Andrew Pavic just with a quick flick of the right hand gets his blocker to that puck to keep this game alive and the Kennedy Cup hopefuls alive as well for the Providence Celtics. Turning it over there was Providence. Centering pass doesn't get through. It's Felice that saves the day there in the D zone. Long stretch pass. Could it be icing? It will be. Beating everyone to the puck there was Burris. If it were a hybrid, he would have won it, but it's not. We'll go down the length of the ice. Again, we see this top line for Providence out there. They're the ones that had that great first shift in overtime. They've been really generating all of the offense here recently for the Celtics. Winning the draw, St. Ignatius, a shot from the point, goes off a stick, goes out of play. And the puck will stay here in the Providence end. Providence bench loves that block from Nico Felice. Tune and Ryan loses that draw, trying to get it out of the zone as Felice, he does. As coming the other way, once again, as Felice quickly met there by St. Ignatius Wolfpack. That shot gets through, but it is blocked by number 32, Egan Ryan. Potential three on two the other way, but the pass a little Aaron, but quickly recovered there by Tiernan Ryan. Ryan trying to find an option, tees one up from the point, doesn't get through. Another one flutters its way in, a chance in front. Oh, and a shot. They're denied, and the net is dislodged. And that's another stoppage here in overtime. We've seen both goalies knock off the net, but we're seeing the St. Ignatius faithful get a little bit restless over Andrew Pavich knocking off the net as we see St. Ignatius captain Jack Reiner talking to the official right now. He wants that delay of game called if. If Max Anderson would hear, he would be telling us how, <laughs> in all of his time broadcasting, he's never seen that delay of game called on a goaltender. As the Celtics have possession, they'll dump it down the length of the ice. And that'll be another icing violation. 
puck goes down to the opposite end once again. Just over three and a half minutes here into overtime, 13-12. But the time doesn't matter, but the next goal does. That's the first line, the usual suspects for Iggy out on the ice here. Rudy, I have to say I'm a little surprised we have not seen more shots on goal. As the one saying that's pretty constant in all of hockey is no shot in overtime is a bad shot. That's Providence the other way, leading the rush is Harris. Harris tries to get one on net, goes wide. Nothing on goal as they try to create that chance. A centering pass doesn't get through. Another look here for Providence. And with the puck once again is Hansel. Hansel tries to dish it off, backhanded pass. Was trying to find Ramos and couldn't. That one goes wide. Team went up from the point, goes off of his own man. And with the puck now is Mastro. Mastro behind the net, looking for options, surveying the ice. Settles for a pass to the point. Shooting one is Breyer. Gets through, but goes wide. It's another look for Providence. They fire it. Safe. It's loose in front, and it's squeezed. Coming away with it was Laughlin, and a lot of physicality here in overtime. You can tell these teams want it. And Laughlin is down. The mask is off. He's touching his head. You hope he's okay. Looks like we're going to get coincidental penalties as well to Dom du to Tom Dukups and Charlie Reef. As the official is going to call them both for roughing, but just as I said it, we see Providence get that puck to the front of the net with lots of traffic, looking for that rebound opportunity. But Ethan Laughlin was there to make all the saves and freeze that puck as well through a whole bunch of commotion all in his grill. Yeah, Andrew, you're talking about the lack of very many shots here in this OT period so far, two to two in that category. Especially for what? What were the shots at in regulation? 56-52, Dylan? Something like that? Yeah, 58-56. to 56. Yeah, you would think you would see even more in overtime. But it's been the exact opposite here. A couple minutes into overtime here. A shot gets deflected in front and goes wide. As it looks like all the shots that they're trying to get through just doesn't hit the net as another one goes wide. A lot of shot attempts, not a lot on goal. Two apiece, as they mentioned. Behind the net is Breyer. Breyer tries to get the pass out, can't, but he recovers that one fine. And it's a two-on-one, but they lose the opportunity there on the Aaron pass. And they'll have to regather as that one is denied by Pavich. Ventura got a stick on it. Pavich will corral it into the corner. Coming the other way is Ignatius. Fires one and another save by Pavich. Trying to find Ventura there. Was Gracie who got the last shot. Ventura has it again. Fires one. And another save there by Pavich. A shot from the point goes wide. Back in a shot. Saved by Pavich. And another stoppage. The net dislodged again. You guys, the St. Ignatius bench furious after that. I got a couple fans down where I am saying that that puck went in. Not sure what you guys saw. Didn't exactly look into me. We'll have to take a look on the replay, but... It didn't exactly seem like it crossed through. And I think St. Nation is also upset thinking that Andrew Pavic should be getting a penalty for knocking the net off here sure. as we're going to see the, the water bottle being applied to the post. Try to lock in that net just a little bit more. And you hope that uh, that doesn't affect their mental approach here. They got numbers. It's Harris who fires one and a save made by Laughlin. And it's the Celtics applying a little bit of pressure. Once again is Harris. Harris trying to find an option there in Hansel, and Hansel beats everyone to the puck. But quickly, Ignatius gets the better of him. And they force the Celtics to have to dump it in deep as they try to get the breakout cook in here in overtime. Long stretch pass. Finds Ryan, but he can't corral it. That one turned over here. Another look for the Celtics. A long pass, a shot. Oh, what a sensational save to keep the game alive by Ethan Laughlin. Stacking the pads from Ethan Laughlin going post to post. And here comes Ryan the other way. He has a look. Was trying to get the wraparound, but can't as Laughlin heroics to keep the game alive. Make sure you hold on to that one. If Ignatius finds a way to get the next one. The guy's pretty sure they got a piece of the post as well. Tense moments, but Ethan Laughlin up to the task as Providence gets it deep. 
applying the forecheck there is Oliver. He loses his stick, getting jumped on, and Oliver throwing punches here. But the puck goes the other way for Ignatius. A nice move, but it wasn't really corralled. And another stoppage coming into the net. It was a Wolfpack member. And the net dislodged, but we'll give uh, we'll give Pavich a little bit of leeway there on that one. So I don't think that one look was at Pavich. Save. I think that might have been, is that Jack Perot? I believe that's Jack Perot. He got pushed into the net by Travis Breyer, which caused that net to get dislodged. That was not Andrew Pavich. As play resumes here in overtime, that one just goes over the blade. It's Burris applying pressure, but beating him to the puck was Charlie Reef. Here comes Kazmala the other way. Kazmala shoots one and it goes wide just above the crossbar. And having a partial breakaway was Burris if he had a man available. But they couldn't find him on the seam. Once That's again the second the time Steinloff. that we've seen Burris get behind the defenseman, but Providence was not able to find him. A look here for Ignatius. Centering pass, save! As Pavic denies any chance, Steinloff trying to find the pass. Goes to the corner instead. Another look. Centered. Save. Rebound. Another sensational save by Andrew Pavic. The puck still in the zone as the Wolfpack trying to zero in on a, on a winner. And coming the other way is the Celtics. Quickly controlled there by St. Ignatius. And a long seam pass, couldn't find anyone. That's going to be icing. And I think if I think if Peralt just waited one more second, he would have had a lane there. But let's take another look at the save and the action here in front of Pavich. Yeah, you're going to see Corbin Klein take this puck off the wall and immediately jam it to the front of the net, looking for the jam or any sort of rebound play. But Pavich stood tall, and you mentioned Jack Peralt. I think he was trying to beat the Providence change. This Providence was a little bit late coming off of their bench, especially their defenseman. If he waited just a little bit longer, Providence would have had that much time to recover. Providence wins the draw forward, but Ignatius, oh, that one goes off the stanchion, goes off the boards, and here comes Victor Ventura looking for the winner. Ventura fires it, and a great save there by Andrew Pavich. The right pad denies Ventura. Another look here in overtime for St. Ignatius. No dice, as that was probably one of the better looks so far here in this overtime period. We're halfway through the period. Still nothing. I think that could have been icing. There we go. We're going to get it. Will be. Called there as one of the linesmen was calling delayed offsides. And guys, since my last update, 2-2 two to two shots in this OT period. It's really picked up. St. Ignatius now leads. 11 to 4, and so now St. Ignatius, 69 shots in this game, one away from 7 0. Jeez. That's a lot of shots. You got to give credit to Pavich. He was the MVP of the league for a reason. He's shown his stripes, and if you're Providence, you're hoping that you can pull one out for your netminder. St. Ignatius fires one, another save, make it 70. Shots on goal for St. Ignatius. Pavich up to the task on that one. Providence tries to get it deep, they can't. With the puck once again is Ventura. Ventura leading the rush, has a little bit of space. Tees one up, and another great save by Andrew Pavich, that time with the glove. We mentioned Victor Ventura before the game. He was the leading point getter for the St. Ignatius Wolfpack in the regular season. One of the better snipers, one of the better goal scorers on this team. But Andrew Pavich out at the top of his crease, catches that one in his glove, no rebound. The barn is tense. Everybody eagerly awaiting the result of this game as the faceoff goes in favor of the Celtics. Trying to get it out is Burris. Quickly met there by someone. A pass in front. Doesn't really find its way to the netminder. As they say, Ignatius with the puck once again. With the puck is Ryan. Ryan couldn't get anything going. Now it's Gracie. Gracie gets it deep. Finds Reiner. Reiner falls down but recovers just fine. Finds Ryan. Ryan on the backhand, centering pass, fires it! Oh, what a sensational pad save by Andrew Pavich to keep this game alive. Absolute great setup by Tiernan Ryan, but you mentioned it. 
Amazing save with the left pad from Andrew Pavich. And it's Felice the other way. Fires one, goes off the stick, but stays in play. It's Burris with the puck, who tries to find Felice, but just hops over his stick. Strange decision there to try to get it out that way, but fortunately for St. Ignatius, they'll have possession here as it's Charlie Reef trying to get it out, and he will. And they'll force the ice. Guys, that incredible save you were just talking about just so happens to be Andrew Pavich's 70th repeat, 7-0. I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen a high school hockey game where goaltenders had 70 saves in a single game. Wow. There might be some historian that can find something, but to me, that has to be one of the records. Still 3-3, three to three, past the halfway mark here in overtime. As a save there by Laughlin, he had to be ready. And fortunately for the Wolfpack, he was. A shot from the point, another save there by Laughlin. With the puck now is Ducups. Ducups gets it deep. Quickly met there by two Celtics. It is Peralt. And Peralt can't really corral it. Getting it back deep are those Providence Celtics. As the breakout trying to get out. Still in the zone. As Peralt has it. He doesn't know where it is. Nearly gets taken away there, but he recovers just in time as he tries to get it out and does. A long stretch pass just beyond the reach there of number 16, Joe Ramos. And here comes, Prov I'm sorry, St. Ignatius the other way. Fires it, and that one goes off the blocker of Pavich, who marks number 71 now. It's a shot from the point. Goes off a body and goes to the left of Pavich. Not on goal, but he wasn't there. That'll be off sides. They won't touch. Providence. Trying to get out of the zone, and they do. Leading the rush now is Castleton. Castleton gets it deep, and squeezing it is Laughlin with 5.29 left in overtime. Guys, just got word from uh, an official here of the CCHL that if we remain scoreless after this period, we will get an ice cut and keep playing 17-minute periods at 5-on-5 five five until there is a goal. Oh, so boy. Very similar to how the NHL has it. We will remain 5-on-5 five five for as long as needed. That ice cut will be much needed as we see the snow build up right now is pretty big on the ice. A shot goes wide. That one was Briar. Absolutely laced one, but it doesn't find the twine as it's Chinlin now with the puck. Tries to get it out and doesn't, but it's recovered there by St. Ignatius and leading that rush is Charlie Reef with a little bit of space. Shoots one and it goes off a of body. And I can assume that it'll stay in the Providence end. I believe it'll stay in the Providence end as well as. Rudy, I think we're seeing both teams really adapt to overtime. They're not taking anywhere near as, ch as many chances as they would before. We're seeing defensemen, for the most part, stay home. Neither team really wants to make that mistake to lead to a goal. As it's St. Ignatius with possession of the puck here, carrying it as Kazmala. Kazmala, that one goes off a body, but with the puck now is Charlie Reef. Reef, that one goes in front. Denied. Pow, oh my goodness. It was loose in front. Now here comes Providence the other way. Leading the rush is Felice. Felice tries to get through and does, but the puck doesn't go with him. And that one will get out of the zone. As it's Breyer getting it deep and trying to play it there is Laughlin. The chip couldn't find Ventura. And the Celtics will play it in deep. Oh, it goes off the stanchion. But fortunately, St. Ignatius had a body there. And now it's Providence the other way. It's Sudeikis. Shoes one. And it goes over the right shoulder of Laughlin. Pass doesn't get through. Rudy, that's not the first time we've seen the puck hit the stanchion over in that corner of the a ice. A turnover in the defensive zone. Trying to get something going. They can't. Long stretch pass to Ryan. Tienan Ryan gets a touch. There will be no icing. Ryan trying to find an option. Centers it. No dice. The net is dislodged once again. Would have been interesting to see if what would have happened if that one would have gone in with this net off its moorings. But once again, it's Ryan. Ryan has a step. Ryan tries to get the wraparound. Can't. Will still corral it. Centering pass. Gets through. The save made by Pavich. Bodies flying around. It's getting tense, folks. 3.30, 3-3. Three 
Providence is really getting away with a lot oh, after yeah. the whistle so far in overtime. I mentioned it earlier. Officials really don't like calling penalties in high school hockey overtime just from my experience. And it seems it's going to continue that way here tonight. The first line out for both teams. And uh, in overtime, that's exactly what you want. The best against the best. And in the case of the CCHL Kennedy Cup final, that's exactly the case number one against number two here in this final round. Trying to beat everybody to the puck is Burris. He does. Trying to find an option, but quickly met there by two Wolfpack players. Played off the boards there, but recovering there is Felice. Felice turns and shoots it. That one goes wide. Burris has it now. Burris. Pass to Felice. Quickly met there in a three on two the other way if they can hurry. It's Klein. Klein passes it, fires it. That one gets blocked in front. And Great the Celtics, block there from Travis Breyer. The Celtics, crisis averted there. But another look for Ignatius as they try to get something going. No penalty. Providence getting away with a lot here in the extra frame. But that's playoff hockey. You got to roll with the punches. As Breyer. Gets it out of the zone. Leads that rush. Has a little bit of speed. Comes through the middle. That one gets deflected. And it goes out of play. Another souvenir for a, uh, I would imagine, a parent. We're going to get another look. As you see the block there from Travis Breyer totally selling out to block that Jack Steinloff shot, which really probably had a really good chance of going in where he was on the ice if that shot gets through. But Travis Breyer put his body on the line to deny that shot attempt. 220 line, 229 left in the extra period here as St. Ignatius can't get it out. That one deflected as well. That one will also go out of play and nearly hits our sideline reporter Dylan Ward. You all right down there? Caution. Yeah, I'm okay. That was about 10 feet to my right, but I have had a couple of uh, uh, flinches when the puck hits the glass in front of me tonight. <laughs> Providence. Got to keep a head on a swivel when you're in an ice rink at all times. St. Ignatius wins the draw. A little bit of miscommunication there on who gets the puck. That's because Mala didn't really know where to go, but fortunately they get it out. Very, very tense moments. A lot of stomachs turning. I can't imagine what it's like to be a parent of one of these kids. But either way, we play on as Ryan tries to get through. He does. Ryan with a little bit of space. Tries to go behind the net, it does. Dishes it off to the point. A shot, doesn't get through, that one gets blocked. There by Oliver, and Oliver trying to beat everyone to the puck and doesn't. St. Ignatius has the puck again, but Oliver gets it deep. Into the Iggy zone. Charlie Reef, long stretch pass. That one touched, it won't be icing. I think that's a fortunate break for the Wolfpack. I don't think that puck got touched as it got waved off for icing. Regardless, the Wolfpack have possession. But here comes Ducups. Ducups has a little bit of room. Fires one, goes over the shoulder of Laughlin. And it's turned over there by Ramos. Trying to get it deep. Actually maintaining possession is Finn Harris. Finn Harris with a little bit of room, but that one is called offside. Hansel just a little too eager to get into the zone. Guys, just coming in here with another shot update. Here in this OT, St. Ignatius has them tripled 21 to seven in this period for a total of a 79 to 59 advantage. Wow. After that most recent shot attempt from Duke Ups, Providence has missed a lot of shots over the net so far in overtime in my opinion. I think it's about four or five already. Where not only do those missed shot attempts don't give you a chance to score, they don't give you a chance for a rebound either, and they really start to be a breakout pass for the other team as well. The final minute of the first frame of overtime, should we need another one? Providence had a little bit of a lane there to try to get a pass through, but now it's Landon with the puck. Nice move, but can't corral it. Ventura tries to get the pass in front to Chinlin, but Chinlin couldn't retain it, and now it's Providence the other way. Laughlin whisks it to the corner, chipping it off the glass there is Perrault. Perrault, long pass there to Ventura. Ventura looks to have been tripped, but Chinlin has possession. Chinlin. Chinlin with the puck is still. Fires one. Save. Rebound. Save again. And it stays out. 
17 seconds left here in overtime. It's Pavic with another pair of beautiful saves to keep this game alive. It's Perrault the other way. Perrault trying to get it deep. Five seconds turn into three. One more look here for Ignatius who fires one. Another save by Pavic and will go to double overtime here in Orland Park. I don't think there can be a better sequence to describe this game than right there, especially for Andrew Pavic. We'll see right here the puck just pinballing. And you see Pavic just going back and forth after making that first stop. And we're going to get the chance here from Steinloff. Or I'm sorry, not Steinloff. That, oh, no, that is Steinloff, yes, Steinloff. with the shot. And Andrew Pavic out to challenge with about what was three seconds left to make a save. Yeah, and now... With the couple of saves Pavic has just made, Andrew, I know you pointed out earlier in the broadcast, you've never heard of a goaltender making 70 stops in one game. He's now one away from 80. It's Absolutely a unbelievable. The MVP for a reason in the CCHL, Andrew Pavic, one save away from 80. Through four periods, we're still all square at 3-3. Three to three. There's going to be an ice cut. So we're going to take a break. Stick around, folks. You do not want to miss another classic ending to game two of the Kennedy Cup final. Stick around.
Welcome back to Arctic Ice Arena in Orland Park, Illinois. A classic here. The game two of the Kennedy Cup final has gone to double overtime, three to three. Number one, St. Ignatius Wolfpack, and number two, Providence Catholic Celtics. It is going to be an absolute doozy, and it's going to be a great one here. Rudy Hodgson alongside Andrew Rubin, Dylan Ward down at ice level. Andrew, I mean, what's it going to take to beat one of these two red-hot goaltenders? It's been an absolute marathon of a game. You have to wonder when fatigue steps in at some point in time for one of these goaltenders. But, Rudy, something to take note of. Beginning of this game, Providence got a quick goal at the start of the game. Coming back from the intermission, Providence got another quick goal yeah. at the start out right after the intermission. I would look out for Providence real early on in this overtime. It seems like both times, too, when we started, Providence got a quick goal. St. Ignatius took over immediately following that goal. So Dylan, that, oh, that first minute is going to be so important here, Rudy. Dylan, you were down at ice level. You were right next to Andrew Pavich's parents. Can you just talk about the tense moments here as we approach second overtime? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just look over at them, total stress on their face, and, you know, now they're right behind him. Another look here. St. Ignatius gets the centering pass. Rebound. Another save by Pavich, and it stays out somehow. That one centered in front. Doesn't get through. A shot gets blocked by the Celtics, and it goes down the length of the ice in an icing. And my heavens, Andrew Pavich has now reached 80 saves in this game. Sure enough, as I mentioned, Providence has came out fast, both at the start and during the intermission. It's immediately St. Ignatius getting all sorts of commotion in front of Andrew Pavich, multiple opportunities, multiple rebounds. But like he's done this whole game, Andrew Pavich has stood on his head. Steinloff wins the draw, trying to get it deep. It's St. Ignatius, but it goes off. We'll repeat in the same dot. A very interesting point, yeah. I mean, Providence typically comes how really hot out of the gates after an intermission or after a start. So we'll see how, they, how they're able to get off on the right foot here. But it's Steinloff with the puck, tries to get it deep, doesn't. A look here for Providence if they hurry. Bruno Hanzel has a little bit of space. Doesn't get the shot off. Gets tied up by the stick of one of the Wolfpack players. Having a chance in front are the Celtics, but they can't get the pass through. A shot. That one gets hit off the skate as now it's Felice. Felice centering it, and it goes off the blocker of Laughlin and out. As we get a stoppage here, another, another net dislodged, and you're starting to hear the jeers from uh, the Providence crowd as once it was... Uh, St. Ignatius doing the same to them. The rivalry is alive and well. Yeah, I think this is more of uh, giving it back to them for what Absolutely. the St. Ignatius fans were doing when Andrew Pavich knocked off the net. But what really was a good shift for Providence is, oh, that there's a great the chance. St. Ignatius nearly had the Kennedy Cup taken away from their hands. But it's Providence... That hits the some iron, and the game continues here in overtime. A pass over to Burris. Burris finds Felice. Felice trying to find Burris, but can't quickly. Almost taken away there by Felice. And the other Felice has it. The centering pass doesn't get through. The chip, the high stick, and they'll play it. Felice gets the shot off, but it goes wide. Another look here for Burris, who has possession, tries to get it deep, won't. Quickly met there, but he has the puck right back. And it's Laughlin trying to play it and does. Settles it down for his defenseman, but they still can't get it out. Another shot goes to the right of Laughlin. It's Moraskas with a shot from the point. That one gets blocked. It stays in the zone. Actually, they'll call it offsides. A very delayed call, but I'm sure it's the right one. We trust the stripes on this one. Yeah, I think that puck came out of the zone. We're going to see if we can get another look at that shot off the post right off of the faceoff. Rudy, you are a goalie. I always think shots off of a faceoff are so tough for goaltenders to pick up because of all of the moving bodies. Absolutely. So much going on. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you're so set in your feet, you have to stay nimble, you have to stay alert because a shot could come. I mean, it could even come off the draw. You know, in situations like this, you really never know. But here comes St. Ignatius. They win the draw. Once again, leading the rush is Ryan. Dishes it off. A shot. That one gets blocked. Goes to the right of Pavich. 
It's the Celtics trying to get it out. They do. It's Peralt with the puck now. Trying to get it out is Providence. They do. Will be delayed off sides. Just a little too eager is Tiernan Ryan. What the puck now is Ducups. Ducups nearly gets it taken away, but he has a little bit of space. Ducups fires one and a nice save there by Laughlin to keep us going. It's Ignatius the other way. Once again, it's Ryan. Has a little bit of space. Gets tied up and tripped up. No call. Battling in the boards are both teams and holding the stick was one of the Celtics, but we play on here in overtime. Ryan, once again, gets it taken away there by a Celtic. But it's St. Ignatius once again with possession. Ryan, a move inside, can't get it, stays in the zone. A little bit of a look here for Kuzmala. Kuzmala tries to get the pass off, and the attempt goes wide, and that'll be another icing. Real good sequence there from St. Ignatius recently. They have been all over the Providence Celtics. Since that chance off the faceoff for the Celtics, an all-out hounding by the Wolf Pack here, keeping this puck in the Providence zone. Haven't really gotten that many shots or any real chances to show for it, but keeping up with that mentality, it feels like at some point in time they're going to be rewarded for this type of pressure. A nice chip goes out. Will it be enough for icing? It will be. It looked like it was going to roll in the direction of the netminder, and it doesn't. Goes the other way instead. Another icing. And we see that top line out for Province. I'm talking about now for probably a better amount of two periods. Burris, Feliz, and Feliz. They're really generating all of the offense for these Celtics. Winning the draw, St. Ignatius Steinloff. Steinloff tries to get it through. Doesn't. Goes off quite a few bodies. Chipping it out of the Celtics and having a little bit of space. Here's Burris. Burris on a partial breakaway. Playing it is Laughlin, and he does. Laughlin comes out, trips up a ref in the process there. As one of the defensemen. Laughlin's aggressiveness stops a potential breakaway. And we continue here. You mentioned it. It looked like Laughlin's a little bit hesitant in coming out of his net there, but got there just in time to prevent a breakaway. Now it's Felice. Felice looking, surveying the ice. Dishes it off to the point. That one goes just wide as the shot from Ducups. No good. Dumping it back in is a Celtic defenseman. That was Muraskas as the pass finds its way over to Klein. Klein tries to put it towards the middle. Nobody there. Ignatius has the puck once again. A chip pass gets through. Once again, it's Klein. Klein surveying. Trying to find an option. The backhand. Save. Rebound. Another sensational save by Andrew Pavich. Great patience there from Corbin Klein. Hanzel the other way. Tries to get it deep and does. St. Ignatius tries to get it out of the zone. Trying to find Ventura. Was a Wolfpack defenseman. That one whisk goes off the pipe. Play continues. A lot of close opportunities, a lot of close chances. No dice so far. The pass in front finds Ventura. Ventura has a look, and another save by Pavic. That shot there from Lucas Dukups off the post. Perfect example of no shot is a bad shot. Another look here. It's Ignatius with the lane. And it doesn't get through. As now, it's Chinlin. Chinlin. Cuts inside, turns around, shoots one, goes wide. The rebound goes off the outside of the post there from Ventura. And trying to tee one up was Chinlin, but they don't. And they're going to call an icing there. As some of the best chances have really come out of nothing. But regardless, we stay square at three. You see that drive of the net from Corbin Klein where he showed some great patience. Then that shot off the post by Lucas Dukups. And then right here, you're going to see Victor Ventura shoot it, shoot it off the side of the net. And Andrew Pavich was not tight to that post, so there was some space. Here we go again. Ignatius wins the puck deep. Gets in front. The rebound. Did it go in? I no. believe it's in the glove what of Andrew Pavich. What a save. Pavich. Andrew Pavich. How did he get that? It looked like a sure goal. And Pavich up to the task. Yeah, and we see the net was almost falling over as Tiernan Ryan and Zach Sadekis both hit into it. 
but Andrew Pavich was unfazed, had that glove right in the right position, and was able to leave no rebound as well from that shot. Burris, a lot of speed, trying to beat the defenseman, doesn't, but still applying a heavy forecheck for the Celtics. It's amazing Burris can fly like that here in double overtime. He's still. got jets, absolutely. As that one finds its way back to Burris. Burris trying to pick up a little bit of speed, decides to pass it to Nico Felice. Felice going to the outside, turns it over, and coming the other way is Tiernan Ryan on a two-on-two. -two. Tiernan Ryan tries to go to the outside and can't, and it's Reiner that tries to get it deep and does. Do cups. Looks like Tiernan Ryan was trying to go forehand, backhand, as he had so many times already today, but Providence defenseman was there to stop him. Felice. Ops for a change, it seems. Could have applied a little bit of forecheck there, but didn't. As now it's St. Ignatius the other way. Actually, I apologize. It's Providence. Providence couldn't get anything going. Almost a turnover, but it's not. With the puck now is Ramos. Ramos gets it deep. Actually tries to, but can't. And now the other way. Here comes Klein. Klein from the outside. Trying to force something in, but can't. Quickly met there by the stick of Travis Breyer. And Breyer finds a way to get it out of the zone. Great play there from Breyer. Looks like it's going to be icing. But he was able to strip Corbin Klein of that puck and then have enough patience to not turn it over right away. We're saying Nick. 9.49. 9.49. Here in the opener. I'm sorry, the 9.49 left in double overtime, I should say. Steinloff meets Castleton. Castleton gets the better. With the puck now is Oliver. Oliver tries to get the stretch pass. In a way he does, finds Mastro who gets it deep. Backhanded pass. Finds Klein. Klein has a little bit of space, holds on, and gets the puck back. Tries to get something in front, but can't. Because now it's Steinloff. Over to Klein. Klein. Has a little bit of space. Centering pass, fires it, goes wide. Klein tries to wrap, can't get it in. It's Oliver who dumps it down the length of the ice and Providence checks up. They'll up for the icing and get the change. Providence very happy to take that icing and as we're seeing the players head back to their benches at this whistle, I think we're really starting to see the fatigue fit in. We're seeing players hunched over, hands on their stick on their knees. Almost feel like that gas tank's running a little bit low for these players on the ice right now. Shinlin loses the draw to Felice. With the puck now is Breyer, but he loses it to Ventura. Between the skates there, trying to get it out. Eventually it's Shinlin that comes away with it, has a little bit of space. Centering pass, doesn't get through. And now it's Felice the other way. Felice to Felice, back to Felice. As now it's Nico with the puck, who dishes one off. Goes above the right shoulder. Of the netminder, Laughlin. Again, Long we see Providence pass. missing the net. It's Ventura with the puck. Ventura, such a staple offensively. He's been a little quiet tonight. Can he help the team get the winner? With the puck now, ooh, from a bad angle there was Lannon. Goes off the outside. And a high stick will be called. The puck will stay in the Providence end. Andrew, you were just talking about the fatigue factor kicking in. I know that you, in your sophomore season as a high school hockey player, played in a triple overtime game, I believe, so you have a little bit of experience in that regard. Yeah, the, that season we played a double overtime against Loyola in our league playoffs, and the next game played a triple overtime game against Providence. And shot from the point. I apologize for cutting you off there, but another shot from the point deflected. Save, rebound, doesn't get through. Another look for Iggy, but they can't get it done. Ignatius with the puck. Another look from the point. Fires it, that one gets blocked. With that one stung Zadakis, and no stick for Finn Harris either. A shot from the point, they score! Jack Reiner, St. Ignatius, back to back. The Kennedy Cup is staying with the pack. They get it done. The thrill of victory for the St. Ignatius Wolf Pack as it was the shot from Jack Reiner, Reiner 
that ended up being the shot to beat Andrew Pavich here. Zach Zadekis blocked a shot earlier. You'll see he'll, he'll be down in the replay. There was no stick for, him, for Finn Harris as well for Providence. And the St. Ignatius Wolfpack took elite advantage of that as it was one golden goal to give them the Kennedy Cup championship for the second straight year. And for St. Ignatius, history repeats itself in the Chicago Catholic Hockey League. The Kennedy Cup is staying with Iggy. 4-3 in double overtime. What a moment for these young kids, man. What a game. One of probably the best high school hockey games that will ever be played. There's not a single thing you can look to where there was a weakness. Both goaltenders played absolutely flawlessly. These players left everything they could out on the ice. There just had to be one winner, and St. Ignatius ended up being that winner, taking advantage of their moment. And now the greatest tradition in all of sports, the handshake line. You love to see the sportsmanship, the two goalies embracing a hug. The two superstars of this game, give them both credit. They both deserve a championship after their performance. As for the elation of one side, the heartbreak in the other, you have to give credit to this Providence team that fought back after losing game one, eight to two. And St. Ignatius, they knew what they were getting themselves into. We spoke with their head coach, Spencer Montgomer, and he said that they couldn't take them lightly and take them lightly, they didn't. It took two overtimes and a shot from the point that I'm sure the netminder could not see as Pavich nearly perfect tonight. But in the end, the Kennedy Cup is staying with St. Ignatius. And when we talked to head coach Spence Montgomery, the first thing he said was the respect he has for Providence and their entire program. You can see that here and you can see that in the game of what was really just a great night of high school hockey. As we await a post-game interview here from our sideline reporter, Dylan Ward, we look back at this season here from the St. Ignatius Wolfpack, 21-3 and three in the regular season. Still alive in the state playoffs. And here they are saluting their crowd who has been there the entire time saluting their two-time Kennedy Cup champions back-to-back -back in the Windy City. As it looks like Dylan Ward is trying to find his go-to players and head coach, Spencer Montgomery, as they're in their celebration mode right now. What a moment this has to be for the head coach, Spencer Montgomery, his first year as head coach and they go the distance. And just as if it was right on cue, let's turn, let's turn things down to Dylan Ward, who's with the Kennedy Cup winning coach, Spencer Montgomery. Thanks guys. Coach, you did it last year as an assistant coach, now as the head coach of this team, back-to-back -back Kennedy Cups. Tell me what's going through your mind right now. Yeah, just very proud of our group, our boys. They deserve this. It's, it's been an incredible year with, with, with some major downs, uh, with our JV always in our thoughts, and then to have this team just rise to the occasion and keep competing and fighting and see our captain get the goal, uh, it means the world for our program, and I'm very, very proud. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dylan. As we await one of the players, but first will come the ceremony. There you see the champions of the 2023 Kennedy Cup, the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. It looks like we're waiting for the trophy presentation, which I assume is going to be presented to the captains of the St. Ignatius team, which as mentioned by Spencer Montgomery, that game-winning goal was scored by their captain, Jack Reiner. We'll turn things over to the PA as... We'll let them take over the show from here.
single day for the St. Ignatius Wolf Pack coming together as one for one championship victory. It's the captain, Jack Perrault, lifting it, showing it to the crowd. Who will he pass it to first? No one. They'll, they'll take their, their celebratory picture. Equally as important. And we talk about the history of the Kennedy Cup, probably the most coveted and most well-respected championship in all of Chicago hockey. I guarantee you 20, 30 years from now, these guys, when they shake hands and their rings touch, they will remember these moments and remember all the good times they had when they claimed their second championship in school history. It's actually the oldest trophy too in all of Illinois high school hockey, even older than the state championship. Howling their way through the season. What a long run it's been, a dominant one at times. But you look back on this game and you look at the heroics of Laughlin, stacking the pads when it comes to sticks, getting in lanes, hustling to get to pucks, key saves when they needed it. In the end, the number one team in Illinois high school hockey made it happen. Blocking shots as well. Just everything that represents winning is what happened, not only from St. Nature's, also from Providence in this game as well. The final score here, 4-3 to three in favor of the St. Ignatius Wolfpack here on behalf of everyone here. We would like to thank you guys for your continued support as we await one more interview. Dylan Ward will be interviewing one of the championship players. We'll be with Jack Reiner in just a minute here. Now let's toss things down to Dylan Ward with Jack Reiner. Take it away. Thanks, guys. Jack, two points in this game, an assist and a goal, but the goal obviously much more special. You clinched the Kennedy Cup with that one. Walk me through the play. I mean, honestly, it was just mad scramble that whole, that whole overtime. Puck popped out to me from Jack Perot and took my time, took a look, and put it where I thought it would go in. Thank God it went in. 
these boys battled their hearts out all season and uh, we deserve it. I'm glad we got it done and big things ahead. Big things ahead for sure. You guys take down New True White last night. Quick turnaround here for the Kennedy Cup and go figure you go to double OT here. 89 shots on goal. What a game this was. I mean, it was fantastic. I had so much fun. All the boys had a lot of fun. I mean, playing out here with Cameron Cosmalo, we played together back sophomore year. He came back to team this year. Glad he got a Kennedy Cup. That far, these returning guys. Corbin Clyde, fantastic performance. Uh, just everywhere, all the sophomores on our team, like incredible, incredible. Like, excited to see what uh, the future holds for this organization, but right now the focus is state, so hopefully we can make a big run in that too. All right, Jack, thanks so much. Enjoy this one. Right, thank you, thank you. Guys, what an absolute moment that has to be for the youngster who has made things happen all season long. He's been a fixture, and he's really, really helped the team make things work here as I don't know. You got some of the champions down there. What 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 do they got, Dylan? I mean, I mean, what what, what what's going on down there? I don't, they're looking for Max Anderson, so I, you know they want to get a message across to him. But but he he might be watching uh, from home. So if you got something to say, go for it. Uh, you know, hi Max Anderson. You know, you were chirping us a little uh, in the first game. You know, so uh, I think we proved to proved your point that you know we're the best team in this league. You know, no one's gonna mess with us now. Thank you. Hi Max. <laughs> that guy's back to you. Well, you gotta love that. As uh, we conclude things here, we would like to thank our crew here, Andrew Dillon, of course our cameraman Matt, Jimmy Olsen, the tech, Matt Freeman. Of course we would like to thank Max Anderson who's really made this all happen. On behalf of Andrew Rubin, Dylan Ward down at Sideline, I've been Rudy Hodgson. Thank you so much for tuning in. The Kennedy Cup champions, the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. We hope to bring you some more coverage next season. Thank you all very much. We also would like to thank Andrew Schley and Nick Ichancio for helping out the CCHL Network as this will be the last broadcast this year for all the work they do behind the scenes and making this possible for us to bring the games to the many fans that we also thank as well for tuning in. This would not be possible without you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great night. And congratulations once again to the Kennedy Cup champions of 2023, the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. Good night, everyone.